between Oregon and Oregon State. All right, thanks so much, Rob. Well, here we are at Auction Stadium getting set for just that, the 117th playing of the Civil War. As we welcome you to Fox College Football here in Eugene, Oregon. Oregon State against the Oregon Ducks. Well, what do we have? A lot of green and yellow. We've also got some black and orange because this is one of the best rivalries in all of college football. And hello to everybody. Justin Kutcher alongside Joel Klatt. Happy belated Thanksgiving. We hope you're enjoying your turkey hangover. We've got some good football in store. Joel, this is one of the best rivalries in the country, and sometimes people don't even realize that. Well, rivalries all around the country are born out of two things. One would be tradition and respect, like USC and Notre Dame. Others are born out of nastiness. This one falls in that latter ca uh, category. These two ball clubs do not like each other. The fan bases don't like each other and they have to live amongst each other for 365 days because of that proximity so near each other 50 miles separate the two schools execution will be at a premium early in this ball game whatever team can get over the emotion of that early wave of this rivalry and execute their system is going to have a huge advantage well both these teams rely heavily on their quarterbacks and we have two quarterbacks one who everybody knows about yep. and one who's kind of flown under the radar marcus mariota is the best quarterback in the country in my estimation and it's because of his combination of explosiveness outside of the pocket and the ability to control the game from inside of the pocket he's going to have a huge decision to make after this ball game whether he goes to the NFL or not it might be his last game at Autzen Stadium as for Oregon State Sean Mannion is one of the best in the country as well he has been asked to carry this Oregon State team for most of the season he's done a wonderful job doing that 4,000 yards during the course of this season but he struggled of late 10 interceptions in their four game losing streak he's got to play clean today if they want to play with Oregon okay so that's the quarterbacks how about the running backs especially for Oregon for more on that Let's check in with Molly McGrath. Justin, Oregon's running back Byron Marshall injured his right foot against Arizona last Saturday, and I saw him out on the field during warm-ups, and he was wearing sweatpants and a boot on that right foot. Now DeAnthony Thomas will start in his absence, and offensive coordinator Scott Frost told us that the Ducks are a better team when Thomas has the ball in his hands. Frost said that Tom, he still has to figure out the distribution of carries between DeAnthony Thomas and Thomas Tyner, but stressed that the key for their offense today will be establishing the run early, no matter who's carrying the ball. Justin? No doubt about it for the Ducks. That is the key. One of the best rushing teams in the country. Oh, this is going to be a lot of fun here in Eugene. The 117th playing of the Civil War. Oregon State, Oregon, coming up next. The state of Oregon, an area of unparalleled beauty. But tucked away in this picturesque wonderland, a nasty rivalry belies the majesty and beauty of the Pacific Northwest. Just 50 miles of Oregon Highway separate Corvallis and Eugene. Everyone in the state picks a side, and familiarity and proximity breed contempt. Our rivalry with, with Oregon State has been special. It's the Civil War, a rivalry game, our biggest rivalry game, and uh, it gets pretty wild. That's always big, especially in the state of Oregon. Uh, you know, a lot of families are divided by Oregon State or Oregon. This will be the 117th time that Oregon State and Oregon battle for state supremacy in the Civil War. That long-standing Civil War game, it's the most important single sporting event in our state. This is the Civil War on Fox Sports 1. I don't know about you, but I'm pumped up. Fox College Football is presented by K Jewelers. It is a chilly afternoon here in Eugene, Oregon. Justin Kutcher alongside Joel Klatt, Molly McGrath. 47 degrees, feels more around 40 degrees with the wind chill. The head coach for the Oregon State Beavers in his 12th year with this team is Mike Riley and see what they did really a tale of two seasons Joel and they faced the stronger portion of this Pac-12 conference in the back half of their schedule they've struggled with that they've struggled with balance on offense going to look for that today out of their running game and Storm Woods and Teron Ward that's what Mike Riley needs out of this Beavers team. 
And for the Oregon Ducks in his first year as the head coach, Mark Helfrich got off to a fantastic start, but all of a sudden, their last three games, they're one and two. Those eight wins to start a career as a head coach were the most of any Oregon coach in history. The trouble of late, an inability to run the football with consistency, which is very un-Oregon-like. They're looking to get back to that this afternoon against their hated rival. Oregon State won the toss. They have elected to receive. Matt Logan will kick off. Victor Bolden and Jovan Stevenson are back to receive. This place will get loud. Bolden will return it from the one. Bolden gets hit as he gets the 25 up to the 26. And Joel, how about the impact players this side of the ball? It has to start on the outside with Brandon Cooks, one of three finalists for the Bolitnikoff Award for the nation's top wide receiver. He's one of the best in the business. Storm Woods in that running game, got to get traction early. Oregon's defense, one of the best corners in the country, Ifo Ekpre Olamu. It's going to be one on one with Brandon Cooks on the outside. And then in a passing situation, look for Tony Washington, the great pass rushing defensive end for the Ducks. Storm Woods in the backfield here on first down. Hand off to Woods. There's a good run on first down as he gets up to the 33-yard line. Picks up seven, tackled by Kaylee Ikipi. Sean Mannion, his numbers this year, he's put up impressive numbers, but as you mentioned, the Open, his last three to four games, been struggling. Ten interceptions in those ball games. Has to play clean, but... He's one of the best pure passers that we have in the country right now. Second down and three. Mannion's first pass of the game is complete to Brandon Cooks. And Cooks has the first down as he gets thrown down at the 41. And Bray Olamu with a tackle, an eight-yard pickup. That's the matchup that I'm waiting to see all week. I couldn't wait to see Brandon Cooks' 110 catches, now 111 against the terrific All-American caliber corner, Ifo Ekpre Olamu, who's a junior from Chino Hills, California. He's going to be in a one-on-one -on -one coverage most of the day. First and 10. They're going to hand off to Cooks. And Cooks gets wrapped up after a pickup of one by Ekpre Olamu. This fly sweep was made famous by Mike Riley in Oregon State. Jaquiz Rogers was a guy that really made this play a staple for this Beavers offense, and now it's Brandon Cooks who's asked to run it. Second down and nine here for the Beavers. Mannion comes back to Cooks. And Cooks across the 45 to the 46. Taylor Hart with a tackle, a pickup of five. Excellent patience from Sean Mannion and Cooks. They know that they're trying to get that screen to the middle of the field, but Mannion keeps his eyes to the right. Cooks delays up the line of scrimmage. That's what allows him to get into this third and short situation. Much easier now inside of five yards. Third down and four. The Duck faithful making a lot of noise. Woods in motion. Mannion swings it out to Woods. Great cutback as he has the first down. Storm Woods actually has more receiving yards this year than rushing yards out of the backfield. Avery Patterson, number 21, is the duck that has a chance here, but he gets juked right there. Actually, Patterson makes the tackle, but that inside move is what ultimately allows him to get that first down. That was Prevo with the missed tackle. First and 10 here for Oregon State in Oregon Territory. Hand off to Woods. And Woods picks up four yards. And this, this is going to be a key for Oregon State. Can they run the ball effectively against Oregon? Last week, Arizona was able to do that on first down. Granted, they've got Kadeem Carey, one of the best running backs <laughs> in the country. But their yardage on first down really set up the rest of what Arizona did the rest of the day. That's why you see Oregon State trying to also use that game plan. And off again to Woods. Woods follows some blockers, second effort. He's going to be very close to that first down marker. Wade Kaylee Keepy with the tackle. And there will be a first down. 
This Oregon State team really under Mike Wright. They've been a good running ball club, but they should have gotten away from the run. First and 10 from Oregon's 36. And off to Woods again. And Woods gets out to the 32-yard line, picks up four. Nick Aliotti is going to have to make a decision now on what he wants to do, the defensive coordinator for Oregon. You can see that Oregon State wants to establish that run game early. So do you single up the coverage on Brandon Cooks? Every time that Cooks was singled up last week against Washington in a horrible loss for Oregon State, he went for a touchdown. So that's an interesting chess match going on between the coordinators. Second down and six. There's Cooks in motion. And that pass is broken up, deflected by Taylor Hart. The intended receiver was the tight end, Connor Hamlet. The best attribute that a defensive lineman can have, especially the interior defensive lineman on screen passes, is recognition. He shouldn't be able to swim that easily. That's immediately when Taylor Hart recognizes I've got to fall back into the lap of the screen. He does so. Excellent job by Hart. Now he's forced a long yardage third down situation at third and six. Third and six, tenth play of the drive. Manning steps up, throws, completes the pass. That's to Kellen Clute, but it looks like Clute was tackled about a yard shy of the first down marker. Great go pursuit. for it here. Well, before the decision, the pursuit of Oregon secondary is what's forcing this decision from Mike Riley. The offense is on the field. They're going to stay on the field. Mannion and the Beavers going for it on fourth down in their first possession. A good opening drive here for Oregon State. But does momentum shift if Oregon comes up with a stop? Mannion to pass on fourth and one to the end zone, and that one's picked off. Ekpre Olamu. <laughs> Terrible decision, double coverage. Just needed one yard, went for the home run, and Ekpre Olamu says no, no. No score as Ifo Ekpre Olamu with the interception on fourth and one in the end zone, which brings us to Oregon on the field and the impact players this side of the ball. Well, for D'Anthony Thomas, he needs touches. Josh Huff on the outside, he's an explosive player. On first down, it's Thomas. Tyner who breaks free. Tyner, the true freshman, across midfield, and he's down all the way at the 40-yard line of Oregon State. That's exactly what Oregon State had happened to them last week. They gave up 530 rushing yards to Washington, an Oregon State record. Oregon right back in that hole. The question was going to be, as we heard earlier from Molly McGrath, who gets the carries? Now with Byron Marshall not playing. Well, Tyner got the first one. Made a lot of it, 40 yards. Takes the handoff again. Let's take a look at that big play to start the game. How about this double team right on the defensive tackle? Hornis Grasso and Cameron Hunt getting the job done on the inside. That's what ultimately springs Tyner, finds the seam for the big game. And off once again, Tyner slips the tackle. And with that leg drive, let's see where they give him the forward progress. Very close to that first down. Tackled by Tyreek Zimmerman. And this Oregon Ducks offense is going quickly. Again, it's Tyner, and he picks up the first down. Mariota struggled with an injury, remember, against Stanford. Sprained his knee. He's been limited the next couple of weeks. Hasn't rushed the ball like he's normally done during the course of his career, but they say he's fully healthy and the entire offense now at his disposal for this Civil War. D'Anthony Thomas now in the backfield. He splits out. 
Mario's first pass of the game is complete to Josh Huff. We're up to the 14-yard line, 13-yard completion. That's the difference right there. A lot of quarterbacks around the country can run it like Mariota. Well, some can, but he controls the game from the pocket. Excellent throw over the middle of the field. Hand off to Anthony Thomas. And Thomas up to the 11, gets three. Dylan Wynn with a tackle. This Oregon team this year, quick strikes. Most of their touchdowns come in under two minutes. Mariota, pump fake, pressure. Mariota loses the football. A bunch of flags on the field. It's recovered by Oregon State, but it looks like this will be a moot point because of face mask. Dylan Wynn looked like he got the face mask of Marcus Mariota. Our referee today is Jack Fallier. Prior to the fumble, personal foul, face mask, defense, number 45. That penalty is half the distance to the goal, first down. This is just an effort play, reaching out, trying to get to Marcus Mariota in the pocket. And right there with the right hand, just part of the ear hole gets grabbed. The f penalty flags come out and negates a huge turnover. Remember, this Ducks team normally doesn't turn the ball over. The last four years, all those BCS balls have been terrific in the turnover margin, and Oregon dodges a huge bullet early. First and goal from the five. DeAnthony Thomas backs it back. Cuts back, touchdown. That move by DeAnthony Thomas. So athletic. Dylan Wynn for Oregon State was in the backfield. And Thomas changes his entire direction. Makes a great cut and gets in the end zone. Matt Logan on for the extra point. Can you explain to me why they do that? It's all about, based on the ratios, the numbers. If the defense doesn't line up correctly, they'll snap it and go for two. Try to get any extra point that they possibly can. They get one extra point. DeAnthony Thomas with his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. Watch him bounce this one back. What? No, let's come back this way and cut it to the end zone. Seven up in Oregon. Anthony Thomas puts Oregon up on the board first, 7-0, with his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. And look at what this guy has done over the course of his career. That's why Scott Frost, the offensive coordinator, told us they got to get him the ball, no matter how. Handing it to him, throwing it to him, kick returns. Anthony Thomas, one of the most explosive players in the country. One touchdown every 9.1 touches. Crazy. That is unbelievable. Crazy good. Matt Logan to kick off once again with Victor Bolden back deep. Couple yards deep in the end zone. Bolden will try to return it. Bolden. Let's see where they mark him out. He'll be marked down at the 22-yard line. Let's go back to that touchdown run by D'Anthony Thomas. It's just all individual effort, plus an over-pursuit by number four for Oregon State, DJ Alexander. He's going to be your linebacker to the top of the screen. He goes out of the formation. Now he's going to come in. Watch how he reads the handoff, and now he's going to go inside, and Thomas goes all the way back outside and around him. That missed tackle is what allows Thomas to ultimately get to that point, cut up the field for the touchdown. Excellent individual effort. Ron Warren in the backfield here for the Beavers on first down. Mannion gets rid of it, gets hit as he throws, and that is complete. Across midfield to the tight end, Caleb Smith. A 31-yard completion. Caleb Smith, a backup tight end. Connor Hamlet, number 89, tweaked his knee earlier in this ball game, and so already into the depth chart for Oregon State. 
And that was a great adjustment. Mannion was looking for number eight, Richard Mullaney, and the tight end, Caleb Smith, bailed him out. Hand off to Ward. Ward able to get outside, lowers his shoulder, gets tackled by Ekpre Olamu, picks up six, second down and four. Ekpre Olamu, you know, I've said he's one of the best in the country, already has an interception, but this is what I think really separates him on that last play, his ability to tackle, even in space. A lot of corners shy away from that, but Ipo Ekpre Olamu, he's only 5'10", 195 pounds, but he'll stick his nose in there. Very good tackler on the outside. Second down and four. And off again to Ward. And Ward gets ripped down from behind by Taylor Hart. How about our Chevy Keys to success? Well, for Oregon State, sadly, they're already failing in this <laughs> key. Play from ahead. Yeah, you know, it's too hard to come back against Oregon. It's just like a tidal wave against you with their offense. And for Oregon, this is straight from Mark Helfritz, their head coach. Play fast, physical, clean, and sound. He said that's not what they did against Arizona. They've got to get back to Oregon football and the win the day mentality. Third and four empty backfield as Mannion's in the shotgun. Cooks in motion. Pressure coming. They get it off to Cooks. And Cooks has the first down up to the 34 yard line. Picks up seven to Forrest Buckner with a tackle. And another good move after the catch from Brandon Cooks. Throwing short of the chains, allowing the explosive wide receiver to make a cut right there against DeForest Buckner, number 44, but ultimately finds that yardage to gain marker and gets it done. Teron Ward in the backfield. Mannion. That is incomplete, was looking for Ward in the backfield. All time now for our first Lowe's Never Stop Improving game break. Let's go back to L.A. and Patrick. All right, guys, the hopes and dreams of a Fresno State BCS Bowl game crushed by San Jose State. David fails one yard, quarterback sneak. He also has six touchdown passes all in the first half. No offense for Derek Carr and the Bulldogs in the second half. 62-44, late fourth quarter. Justin and Joel, back to you. That is a huge development as far as the BCS is concerned. A 7-0 lead here for Oregon, but there was a flag on the play holding against Oregon State. So backs up the Beavers. First and 20. Handoff to Ward. Ward, a good run. Teron Ward. Gets those yards back and more as he gets 12, tackled by Derek Malone. I love the play call because Oregon was sitting back, waiting for Mannion to sit there in the pocket and try to get down the field on first and 20, but this gets half of it back. My mentality as an offensive play caller would always be, if I'm behind schedule, I'm gonna try to get half back unless it's a third down and I gotta move the chains. First and 20, get 10 or 12 yards and make this a second down and manageable situation. Much more manageable second down and eight now for the Beavers. Ward again with the run. They'll get up to the 31 yard line. It's third down and seven coming up here for Oregon State. You can already tell what Oregon worked on in this short week defensively, stopping the run. You know, especially when you get those heavy run sets. They were torched by Kadeem Carey last week against Arizona, holding up pretty good here against Oregon State. But now it's Mannion and Cook's time on third down. Storm Woods in the backfields. A good receiver out of the backfield here for Oregon State. Pressure coming. Mannion goes down, sacked all the way back down at the 44. There is a flag on the play. The pressure was to Rodney Prevo, number 86, and number 91, Tony Washington. Tony Washington, seven and a half sacks so far on the year. One of our impact players comes up with a huge sack here early in this ball game in the first quarter. On to punt is Keith Costell. Braylon Addison back deep. Addison calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 14-yard line. A 29-yard punt. This Oregon offense already off and running. D'Anthony Thomas with one touchdown as Oregon leads seven to nothing. Wow. 
Time now for our FedEx stat comparison and the start that Oregon got off to this year and what they've done their last three games. 8-0, 56 points per game, but more importantly, 332 yards on the ground. Since then, Stanford stifled their running game with that terrific defense. And last week against Arizona, they just fell behind and couldn't really utilize that running game. Plus, you had the injury to Marcus Mariota. That's the difference for them. They need to get that rushing yards per game back up. On first down, Mariota swings out to Josh Huff. Huff gets a block down the sideline. And he gets tackled at the 31-yard line by Ryan Murphy. You mentioned Mariota. Look what he did in those first eight games. Then the knee injury, all of a sudden, how big of a difference that made for this team. Yeah, it was a huge difference. And it was a huge difference with him on the outside. Wasn't able to utilize that explosiveness with his feet. Pass to Brandon Addison. And Addison gets Brandon. pushed forward up to the 45. Another first down. That tackle by Jabrell Johnson, a 14-yard pickup. One of the things that is so effective about this Oregon offense, everyone talks about the pace, and yes, they can run the football. Marcus Mariota gets the ball out of his hands so quickly, it really doesn't allow the pass rush to get going from the other perspective. Hand off to Anthony Thomas. Thomas, another nice move as he gets across yeah. midfield up to the 49. Scott Crichton with the tackle. A six-yard pickup, second and four. They're not even in hyper mode, and they're still <laughs> going fast. You know, this is very tough to line up against. You get very tired from a defensive standpoint. Kept by Mariota. Now he passes to Addison. A flag comes flying in. And let's see what this flag is for. It was a pickup of seven would result in a first down for the Ducks. And there was flag thrown before in the sack, but they picked it up because it was going to be against Oregon State. On the offense, number 32. That's a 10-yard penalty. Remains second down. Evan Bayless, redshirt freshman from Centennial, Colorado. And he was on the opposite side of what was even going on. So you know he's going to get an earful from the coaches. Mark Helfrich can't be all that happy about it. Maybe that's what he's talking to the officials about. And you had to mention Colorado already in the broadcast, right? Centennial. <laughs> Second down and 14. Coming up on two minutes to go here in this first quarter. The handoff to Daryl Hawkins. And Hawkins, not much room to go. He only got two tackled there by Tariq Zimmerman. And that's the key. Tariq Zimmerman, number eight, those safeties. This is what Stanford did so well against Oregon is that they're outside players, outside linebackers and safeties. They tackle well in space. You have to get these Oregon Duck ball carriers to the ground with your first player if you want to have success defensively. Third and 12. Mariota, he's going to step up and run. Mariota will get wrapped up shy of the first down. Good tackle there by Sean Martin after Mariota picked up nine. He needed 12. Yeah, Martin did a great job. And Rashad Reynolds, the corner, number 16. But Oregon's offense going to stay on the field. Plus territory, fourth down. Mark Helfrich is going for it. Fourth and three, Tyner's in. Tyner on the carry has the first down. The defensive end, number 95, Scott Crichton, got caught in no man's land, trying to shuffle down the line of scrimmage, but if you're shuffling, it's too late. Tyner with the first down. Tyner again with the carry. This freshman is impressive. Saw him a couple weeks ago here against Utah. He's got speed, he's got power. This guy ran for 10 touchdowns in one high school game. Well, I remember Byron Marshall not playing in this ball game. He's their normal starter, almost five yards from 1,000 yards. But it just shows you the type of depth that Oregon now has in their program. Mariota to Huff. Huff gets the block down the sideline. He does not stay in. He steps out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Keenan Lowe, number seven, had the key block. He sprung Huff down the sideline. They just showed this crowd the replay on the big screen. Obviously disagree with the fact that 
Huff was out of bounds. Very close with that left foot. These Duck fans do not like the call. And off. Tyner. Tyner breaks it. Tyner! Touchdown! Yard touchdown run by the true freshman Thomas Tyner. Got to be nice to have a freshman that can step up in the absence of Byron Marshall and run this well early in a rivalry game. The emotion of this ball game has not gotten to Thomas Tyner. Matt Wogan on for the extra point. 14-0 Oregon leading Oregon State. Josh Huff down the sideline. Thought he stayed in bounds. Instead, he's ruled out. And that's the right call. But what happens next? Hand off to the true freshman, Tyner. He'll take it in. 14-zip, Oregon on top. Kansas and Iowa State takes on West Virginia. The 25th-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish battle eighth-ranked Stanford on Fox. Fox Sports, your home for college football all week long. Thomas Tyner with his ninth rushing touchdown of the year. Needs some extra work on the bike. Logan to kick off. Victor Bolden from the two. Bolden up the middle gets hit hard as he gets the 23-yard line. Absolutely imperative that Oregon State answers on this drive. It's a huge ball game. Oregon leads this series 60 to 46. 117th meeting, ties for the sixth most in FBS, and that's gonna go up because all those rivalries that college football has lost yep. over the last couple of years in terms of conference realignment. Storm Woods is in for the final play of this first quarter. He takes the handoff up the middle. And Woods gets up the 29-yard line. A five-yard run for Woods. Oregon, a couple of touchdown drives. 10.6 yards per play. They lead after one, 14-0. the 117th Civil War. Justin Kutcher alongside Joel Klatt. And Joel here with Oregon State down by 14. How important is this drive right now for the Beavers? It's crucial because they've had a couple of good series and they haven't been able to finish those with any sort of points. The turnover and then ultimately getting off the field on the last drive was, was Oregon. But running the ball on first down is very important for Oregon State because that pass rush for Oregon has been so effective when they've been in long yardage situations. Mannion throws, completes to Brandon Cooks, and Cooks has the first down. Our forward stack comparison from the first quarter. Those rush yards for Oregon, such a good omen. Weren't able to do that against Arizona. Mark Helfrich was just beside himself in our meeting this week about the fact that he needed this team to get back to what they were good at, and those 108 rushing yards in the first quarter suggests that they're right on track. Mannion, play action. He got stripped. The ball is loose. Storm Woods dove on it. It was stripped by Raheem Castle. A loss of 15 on the play. Castle was working against Storm Woods on this blitz. There's number 24 on the right side of your screen, and he picks a side. You can't do that in pass per section. And Castle does the right thing. He rips through the one side of the running back, gets all the way, attacks the football. Oregon State, very fortunate that they didn't turn that ball over. So now they're faced with second and 25. Mannion sets up the screen for Woods. Woods, a nice move. He gets across the 30, up to the 31, picks up nine. Well, this is not the series that Oregon State needed to open up this quarter. A huge break for the Beavers that they were able to recover that 
fumble from Mannion, but now on third and 16, that pass rush has been so effective on these obvious down situations. Number 91, Tony Washington, the best pass rusher that Oregon has. He's going to be on the right side of the defense, working against the right tackle, Sean Harlow, a true freshman from Anaheim Hills, California. Third and 16. Mannion steps up over the middle, gets to the Woods. Woods breaks a couple tackles, but he's not going to break that final tackle. Brian Jackson able to bring him down. Even though Oregon State is going to have to punt this ball away, that was a good play from Sean Mannion. You can get too greedy, try to move the chains, try to panic early in this ball game, force the ball down the field like we saw him do earlier in the game. You can turn the ball over. It really leads to that avalanche of points that Oregon can throw on opposing teams, but punting the ball away, trying to live for another down is what Mannion implored there. Keith Costle to punt with Brennan Addison back deep. A high, short punt. Addison bobbles it! And it's recovered by Oregon State's Ryan Murphy. What a huge break for the Beavers. They needed something. No life for Oregon State yet in this ball game, and they get it on special teams. What a hit. How many times do we see when the football is allowed to get to the shoulder pads and ricochets off the player and Ryan Murphy, very opportunistic, runs right into the football for the recovery and now the Beavers have got to score on this possession. First and 10 for 23 of the Ducks. Teron Ward in the backfield. Mannion throws. And that pass is incomplete. Caleb Smith got hit hard, and the ball was jarred loose by Derek Malone. Coverage all over the field, nowhere to go with the ball. This is the fifth time Mannion has had to dump the ball down to the check down. All those green jerseys in the back just suffocating these wide receivers. Nowhere for Mannion to go. Great coverage underneath, two safeties deep, forces him to come down to the check down, and then the pursuit of the football. Been very impressed with Oregon's linebacker course so far in this ballgame. Second down and 10. Hand off to Ward. Runs into his own man, gets up the 20. 19-yard line, they'll say, and pick up three yards. Brandon Cooks has not been single covered all day long. When they try to go down the field, what happened? Double coverage, interception. The only time they've been able to get him the ball, the Belitnikoff Award finalist, is on screen passes and hitch routes. They need him now on a huge third and seven. Pressure coming on third and seven. That pass is incomplete for Cooks. Was covered by Ekpre Olamu, and there is a player down. That is Ekpre Olamu. They finally singled him up. Menyon went right there. Ekpre Olamu, the All-American in single coverage. He goes over the top, and immediately, Started grabbing for that right side, his right arm. Got away with a little hook on that left hip of Cooks, but that ball a little too far in front. Cooks was looking for the flag, but Ekpre Olamu shows that he can even in single coverage hang with the Bolitnikov finalist. Ekpre Olamu walking off the field. On for the field goal attempt is Trevor Romain from 36 yards. kick is no good wide right there is a flag on the field though running into the kicker on the defense that's a five yard penalty fourth down Dior Mathis number three is the guy who gets the kicker Romaine 
well after the kick just bumps into him maybe a little acting but Oregon State needs it. they can use any break they can get right now a fourth and two I would be tempted to go for it they're going to call the PAT unit back this field goal unit back the offense now huddling and they're going to take a timeout and talk about this you don't want to fall behind Oregon by too much Mike Riley I feel like seems like this game is in the balance on this series and he needs seven points a critical penalty against Dior Mathis extends this drive for Oregon State down by 14. Fourteen nothing Oregon leading Oregon State fourth and two coming up. The offense is back out in the field. They're going to go for it after that penalty. And remember, Ekpreolamu is injured, but he is back in the game right now, lined up against Brandon Cooks. And singled up, no safety over the top. Storm Woods in the backfield. A must here for the Beavers. Mannion, play action, throws, completes it to Cooks for the first down. Big play action fake. Easy to get a fullback out of the backfield into the flat. Clearing out the zone for Cooks to run a little hook route against single coverage. We're just banking on the fact that an experienced wide receiver can win, and he did for the first down. First and goal from the 10 now for Oregon State. Hand off. Woods. Woods. Able to get low, get up to the six, pick up four, second and goal from the six coming up. With a couple of huge breaks Oregon State has gotten. First to get the ball, period, on this drive after the fumbled punt. And then the running into the kicker, which extended the drive. They go for it on fourth down, and now second and goal from the six-yard line. With all that, they have to get seven here on this drive. Woods again. Pushing that pile. And Woods gets all the way down to the two-yard line. Third and goal from the two coming up. Taylor Hart with his third tackle. In this rivalry game, they're going to hit hard. Mike Riley loves play action in these scenarios. Number 33, Tyler Anderson, the fullback. Come open in the flat off the play action. From the two, Woods. Woods. Touchdown. Storm Woods with his fifth rushing touchdown of the year, and that gets Oregon State on the board. And three straight carries over the left side of that offensive line. Michael Phillips. The senior from California, Josh Andrews, a redshirt senior, known as Juice, the left guard, number 69, paved the way for Storm Woods and a touchdown after the gift from Oregon on the fumbled punt. Trevor Romain now on for the extra point. Well, we said this drive was going to be important for Oregon State. It looked like Oregon came up with a stop, but Braylon Addison fumbled the punts, recovered by Oregon State. Then on a field goal attempt, a running into the kicker penalty extends the drive. And finally, it's Storm Woods punching it in from two yards out. 14-7, Mike Riley happy that his team is on the board. Well, that scoring drive was all set up by the fumble on the punt return by Braylon Addison. And they kept it on the ground after the first down conversion with Storm Woods. So now it's Trevor Romain kicking off to Anthony Thomas back deep. And this is a scary guy to kick off to. And Thomas will take a knee about five yards deep in the end zone. Well, the Pac-12 championship, Joel, it's all set. It's going to be Arizona State taking on Stanford. Taylor Kelly, what he has done this year for the Sun Devils. And, of course, Stanford getting in 
thanks to last week, Oregon losing to Arizona and Stanford beating Cal. Location still yet to be determined. It'll all be determined in that Arizona State-Arizona game. If Arizona State's able to win, they'll host the Pac-12 championship. Stanford hosted last year against UCLA and Arizona State lost. They'll host for the second straight year. On first down, D'Anthony Thomas again with a cutback. And Thomas, very close to that first down marker, looks a little bit shy, picks up nine, DJ Alexander with a tackle. Discipline is so important against Oregon. You gotta stay in your gap, gap responsibility, and these Oregon State defenders aren't doing that. Over pursuing, allowing big seams for these explosive running backs. It's kept this time by Mariota. And Mariota has the first down as he gets up to the 45, 44, Ryan Murphy with the tackle. Again, the defensive end. Watch the defensive end come crashing down, allowing Mariota the eight, the, the outside, that angle to get outside for a big gain and to move the chains once again. First and 10 for the Ducks. Mariota looks back to the sideline. Quick pass is complete to Keenan Lowe, who chips over that turf. It can be tough, that 45-yard line. <laughs> See what you did there. Sean Martin, the outside linebacker. That whole play, that's a run play called, but Sean Martin, number six, he's that walkout player, the outside linebacker. Here's Sean Martin. If he splits out too far like he is now for the wide receiver, he'll just run it. Mariota with time, taking a shot down the field for a home. Sean Martin again. Here he is. There's the matchup in the slot. Man to man coverage, so tough to do against Josh Huff, the senior playing his last game in Autzen Stadium. Six career, 100 yard receiving games. You can see why. Very explosive in the second level. And um, Thomas. And Anthony Thomas, forward progress up to the four. Gets six yards. Sean Martin with a tackle, but how about Marcus Mariota? Six for six on the night. 107 yards already. As good as they come. He's going to have a very tough decision to make after this bowl game, after their bowl game, whether he wants to return to Oregon for his junior season or leave and go to the NFL. Mariota rolling out to his right. Stops, comes back, and throw this one out of the end zone. He got popped late. Devin Kell, 6'4", 246. Expected a flag there, but didn't get one from the official. I thought that was a little too lenient. Oregon very efficient here in this first half, facing a third and goal from the four. Thomas in the backfield. Give it to Thomas, and Thomas gets stuck. DJ Alexander with a big time tackle. And finally, Oregon State stays at home. That discipline that I was speaking of. DJ Alexander, the junior, 52 tackles on the season, stays home and reads it correctly and is able to stop DeAnthony Thomas and force a kick from this offense. That is a win for the Oregon State defense to see this field goal opportunity. Matt Wogan is on for a 20-yard field goal attempt. From 20, it's good. But like you said, for Oregon State, that's a win. You're facing first and goal against this Oregon offense. Everyone's thinking that's on the max seven. Instead, a big time tackle by DJ Alexander and this Oregon State offense back on the field when we come back trailing by 10. Seventeen seven Oregon leading Oregon State 639 to go here in the second quarter Matt Wogan will kick off once again 
with Victor Bolden back deep. This is a short kick. And it's taken at the 22. Bolden trying to get outside. Good coverage there as he gets tackled at the 27-yard line by Dior Mathis. Dior Mathis with some closing speed. Well, we just showed you Brennan Cooks. He'll be back on the field. Let's go back down for more on him with Molly McGrath. Thanks, Justin. As you guys mentioned before, Brandon Cooks is one of the finalists for the 2013 Volitnikoff Award. And Mike Riley told us that it was his offseason that made all the difference because he gained 10 to 12 pounds of pure muscle. Riley said that it's the best 12 pounds he's ever seen on a person because it's helped his durability, explosiveness, and makes him harder to take down. And you can see that tonight. And I think Joel Klatt may be in competition. The 10 to 12 pounds of muscle he put on this year <laughs> for his workload has been impressive. I've the, the wrong word there was muscle. <laughs> well, Brandon Cooks is approaching some single season Pac-12 records. He is now three catches shy of the Pac-12 single season record, which is set by Marquise Lee. He's also approaching the single season total yards or receiving yards record, also set by Lee. On second and ten, it's Ward. And Ward, a good run, that second effort. And he picks up 11 for the first down. Avery Patterson with his fourth tackle. These runs are so important because the pass rush for Oregon has just overwhelmed this passing attack from Oregon State. So Wards and Woods, their ability on first and second down to stay on schedule for Sean Mannion in this passing game is very important. First down, the key down right now in this series and for Oregon State in general. First and ten for the Beavers. They hand off to Bolden on an end around, and Bolden gets tackled by Brian Jackson. Good shoestring tackle there, there by Jackson. It wasn't until we had third and short in the red zone that we saw single coverage on Cooks. And now they're trying to run him out of that single coverage and get those, or excuse me, run him out of the deep safeties by getting those safeties down close to the run box with these fly sweeps with Teron Ward, with Storm Woods, so that they can finally take a shot with Brandon Cooks. There's been a safety over him all day long. Second and five, pressure coming off the edge. Mannion throws over the middle. Clute. Kellen Glute with a first down, picks up 14, time for a game break. Let's go back to Patrick O'Neill. Okay, guys, earlier on Fox, the Apple Cup at stake between Washington and Washington State. Husky running back Bishop Sankey, 200 yards, perhaps the best Husky running back ever. That's his 35th career rushing touchdown. Huskies beat the Cougars 27-17. By the way, Steve Sarkeesian, 4-1 and one in the Apple Cup. That's job security, Justin and Joel. That is certainly job security for Sarkeesian. First and ten here. And off to Woods. And Storm Woods up to the 37 gets six. So similar to what Stanford and Arizona were able to do to this defense. There haven't been big runs. Yeah, there haven't been big seams and 10 and 12 yards. It's four, five, three yards at a time. A lot of times that'll end up breaking the will of a defense, but this Oregon defense, they've found a way during the course of this game to get off the field. It's Ward in the backfield. He cuts it back. There's the big run. Ward inside the 10, tackled by Rodney Hardrick as he is down at the six. A 31-yard run by Teron Ward. And Michael Phillip, number 77, with the key block. Downfield, there it was, sealing the backside. And Ward was able to just take it all the way down the seam. Six yard line, first and goal. And Oregon State's offense now has got some life to it. They're in business in the second quarter. On first and goal, play action. Mannion throws, and that pass is incomplete. Looking for his fullback, Tyler Anderson. Watch the attention that Brandon Cooks is getting even inside the 10-yard line. Start in single coverage with Ekpre Olomo, and there's a safety immediately, even on play action. How about the safety, Avery Patterson? His head isn't even in the backfield right now. That's why we've seen them be able to run the football with such efficiency in the course of this ballgame. Three tight ends in 
And we've got movement. That's going to be against one of the three tight ends, Caleb Smith. False start, offense number 10, five yard penalty. Still second down. That's against one of the three tight ends. The tight end that's not in is Connor Hamlet, and that's one of their primary targets in the red zone. A guy who's 6'7, 265. Hamlet, 36 catches on the year, five touchdowns. Left in the first series of this ball game, tweaked his knee. Oregon State's been without him with the duration. The officials come in. We've got a timeout here on the field. 17-7, Oregon leading Oregon State. Fox. Seventeen seven, Oregon leading Oregon State, three thirty eight to go. They have actually reset the game clock now to three forty six. That was the reason for the timeout. The officials wanted to get that straightened out. But you're facing a second and goal from the eleven after the penalty against Caleb Smith. I'll stick with that run game. Oregon is so concerned with Brandon Cooks. Olamu has done a great job so far, and Avery Patterson, they've doubled him up, but that's why the run game has been able to be consistent for Oregon State. And this is one of those situations in second and goal from the 11-yard line. As a quarterback, once we get to the real crucial down to third down, I want to be near the five-yard line. So I'm thinking about getting half of this back or run play with how they've been able to run the football is probably going to do that for them in this situation. You saw that graphic about what they've done this year. They already have a 99 rushing yards in this first half. Teron Ward is in the backfield from the 11. Play action. Mangan shovels it off to Ward. And Ward gets wrapped up at the 8-yard line by Brian Jackson. What an opportunity here for Oregon. Their offense was just forced to kick a field goal after having a goal to go situation and now they've got a chance to get themselves off the field and force a kick from Oregon State. Quite a stand third down from the eight. Third and goal Storm Woods is in the backfield. Mannion out to Woods. Woods breaks the tackle. And he's going to be down at the two-yard line. Taylor Hart able to push him out. You're looking at fourth and goal from inside the two. Just watching what he's going to do. Speaking of Mike Riley, he's going to send the field goal unit on. He's going to kick this one. Trying to make it a one-score game with 2.46 to go here in this first half. An 18-yard field goal attempt by Trevor Romain. And he drills that one. So both defenses answer the calls and make the stops. The play clock was all the way down to zero. They just got it off, and they get three at 17-10, Oregon. Leading Oregon State. Romain kicking off. Thomas, he's going to run this one out. De'Anthony Thomas thought a couple times about it, and now he runs it out, tripped up by the kicker, Romain, at the 19. So let's go back. We saw Mark Helfrich upset with the officials and what's he upset about he's saying they didn't get the snap off in time and if you look at the play clock you'll see he was right he was absolutely right half a beat after the zero maybe a full second when that snap came in the officials absolutely missed that call Helfrich was right but as it stands the field goal is good we got a seven point ball game and this explosive Oregon offense back on the field 
With 2.28 to go, Thomas Tyner is in at tailback. Mariota with time. Throws, and that one's picked up. Steven Nelson with his sixth interception of the year and just the third interception thrown by Mariota this season, all coming in the last two games. Mariota's been one of the most efficient players in the country from the quarterback position. He's looking for Johnny Munt, a true freshman. This ball just way too high behind him, and Steven Nelson goes up and gets him. An errant throw. Rarely do you see Marcus Mariota that far off, but there was pressure on the play. DJ Alexander was the Oregon State player in his face. Third interception in his last two games. He had set a Pac-12 record to start the season with 353 attempts before throwing an interception. Here on first down, Mannion. He's going to throw this one in the ground. Was trying to set up the screen for Storm Woods. And this is a smart play from a veteran quarterback that's taken a lot of snaps. He knows that on a screen pass, if it's not there, you got to burn it at the receiver's feet. You can't throw the ball down the field because you have linemen down the field. Veteran quarterback, veteran move from Sean Mannion. Second down and 10. Can Oregon State take advantage of the second turnover of the game? He's got his man, Cooks! And Cooks is down at the two. A 30-yard completion. Terrence Mitchell now gets the assignment, the cornerback. It's been Ekpre Olamu the whole night, and Mitchell gets beat. Avery Patterson, who's been in double coverage all night on Cooks, he was late getting over, and that's all Minion and Cooks need. One opportunity, one broken coverage, and they'll hurt you all the way down to the two-yard line. The officials are talking about... They're talking about where he was out. He is out inside the two-yard line. And the runner was down before the ball came loose. So it's first and goal now from inside the two. Storm Woods is in the backfield. Coming up on two minutes to go here in this first half, a seven-point lead for Oregon. And with the play clock winding down, The previous play is under further review. All right, well, this previous play now under review. Ruling on the field was a completed pass prior to the ball becoming loose. That ball came loose at the end, and they said that he was down by contact after the catch, completed ball at the two-yard line. You see he secures the catch. Now he starts towards the pylon and somewhere under there you see the ball rolling towards the out of bounds there's no clear recovery though however it would have gone into the end zone and did so if they rule that this is a fumble this will be a touchback oh that Oregon ball's coming ball, loose and that ball was coming loose wow and then before it goes out of bounds as the ball is rolling along there it Reaches the plane of the goal line going into the end zone. We've got Mike Pereira. Mike, you just saw the replay we showed. What are you looking for? What do you think is the call? I say, wow, and I think, Joel, you guys were on top of this. I do think it's a catch. It rolls forward, and then it touches a player who is out of bounds, so it makes the ball out of bounds at the spot where it touches the player. And that's in the end zone, which would make it a touchback. So to me, it goes catch, fumble, out of bounds, in the end zone. It's be, I think it's a touchback. And Mike, just to be clear, they're also going to review if this was a catch or not. So that three-step process that we always talk about will have to have taken place. The catch, the secure, the ball down. Now he's making a football move. I think the three steps have been secured, and the ball is out without an elbow or knee on the ground. It's clearly a fumble now. Yeah, to to I, you, I is that a catch? And, 
Yeah, to me it's a catch. Remember now we're in college, so he's only got to get the one foot down and then perform an act. And to me, he basically turns around and heads up field. So we all think in here it's a catch. Um, the interesting part was the loose ball touching the player out of bounds. And, and you're right, it clearly comes out before anybody part is down. This could be a huge break in the form of Oregon. Now, the only other thing that, that I'm interested in, and it's hard to tell by these looks, is is it touching a player that's out of bounds before it's right. in the end zone, which would make it then just out of bounds at that point. Am I correct, Mike? Yeah, it would be. It's who it first touches, and that's how you have to follow the, uh, you know, follow the ball, and you get that one look that kind of indicates to me balls out and then rolls did it touch the foot of maybe possibly maybe 27. That's Terrence Mitchell from Oregon the corner originally right. on the play and That's he's the one more up be field a look at. That's for sure. He's the one out of bounds at the one yard line. After, re after right. reviewing the play we have a completed pass then a fumble. The ball was in the end zone when it was touched by a player who was out of bounds but because the ball was in the end zone by rule touchback. And that's the that's the right call Joel. I don't think that uh, you could prove at all that it touched 27 there but uh, good job by the replay official to sort all that out because that was a confusing play. Well thanks Mike and I believe that big ovation was for both you and Joel for your explanation. <laughs> Appreciate it, Mike. <laughs> what a momentum swing here late in this first half. Just a huge play there because they got the breaking coverage that they need. And then Avery Patterson jars the ball, the, the ball loose, the safety. And what an unfortunate break for Oregon State that it was actually in the end zone and touching that player, which gave the ball now to Oregon and Mariota back on the field. Thomas Tyner back in at tailback. He takes the handoff and Tyner another strong run as he picks up 12 yards tackled by Ramo Mangia. They've been a better offense with Tyner at tailback giving him the ball allowing him to get downhill. He is 211 pounds. Mariota throw. That was not a good throw but an, nearly a nice catch but it's incomplete to Braylon Addison. Mariota doesn't look comfortable, does he, after that interception? Choppy feet, quickly tries to check it down, but really rips on that ball towards the outside. His hip flies open, throwing the ball down and low and away from the wide receiver. 138 to go here in this second quarter. And this is going to go for a loss. Tyner gets wrapped up by Scott Crichton. And a timeout is being called by Oregon here. What a play from Crichton. 46 tackles for loss in his career. Fourth in Oregon State history and a huge one there. What they did to me. Civil War coming up on the pizza at halftime. A West Coast air show. The LSU Tigers avoid an upset. Bo Pelini, he's all fired up. And Bo Pelini, he's one of those guys on the hot seat. DeAnthony Thomas comes in here on third and 17. Mariota with time again throws and now that's picked off. Rashad Reynolds. Reynolds across the 30. Second interception by Marcus Mariota thrown in as many series. And just another terrible decision. A late throw floated towards the sidelines with a very wide safety who started off the hash. Reynolds gets deep right away from his corner position, entering your screen there on the right side. And that's an easy interception. Addison had to slow way down. Underthrown, Mariota does not look like himself in the last couple of possessions. Two of the worst throws that he's had all year long. That's the sixth INT for Reynolds on the year, matching his teammate Nelson with an INT before. Play action, Mannion. He's taken a shot, and that is incomplete. Was looking for Bolden, and that was broken up nicely by Avery Patterson. 
They're trying to clear out zones now with Cooks. If Oregon is going to sit there and play double coverage, they're trying to get Avery Patterson, the safety, out of those areas and bring other wide receivers into those zones. Just weren't able to connect there because Patterson has such great makeup speed. Oregon State with all three timeouts remaining. Ward. It's complete here to Brandon Cooks. Look at him shaking big. Brandon Cooks gets up to the 10. Taylor Hart with a tackle. An 18-yard completion of Brandon Cooks. And remember, Oregon State still two timeouts, so under a minute, they can still run the football now at first and goal from the nine and a half yard line. Marcus Mariota just given all sorts of opportunities to this Oregon State team. First and goal from the 10. Hand off to Ward. And Ward brings it down to the six yard line. And now a timeout is taken here by Oregon State. Derek Malone with a tackle. 35 seconds to go. It's going to be second and goal from the sixth. This week on Fox College Saturday, the 25th ranked Fighting Irish of Notre Dame take on eighth ranked Stanford as the Cardinal look to secure a BCS bid. Coverage begins tomorrow at 6.30 p.m. Eastern only on Fox. This Thanksgiving weekend continues and a chance for Stanford to gain some more momentum going to that Pac-12 championship. Yeah, not a league game, but a game in which they need their quarterback, Kevin Hogan, to play well. They've had to protect him a little bit down the course of this season. And for Tommy Reese, he, whenever he turns the ball over and throws interceptions, Notre Dame just doesn't win. So they've got to protect him a little bit in that ball game as well. It's going to be very tough because it's hard to just run the football against that Stanford defense. Second and goal from the six. One timeout remaining. Teron Ward in the that tailback here for Oregon State. Mannion throws out to Ward. Ward with some room to run. And he's going to get tackled at the one-yard line. Terrence Mitchell and Tony Washington combined for the stop. And it looked like there was some indecision there with the line judge and the field judge on whether he was out of bounds or into that pylon for a touchdown before he was out. But now they're gonna bring in the big boys into the game, Tyler Anderson, the fullback, 223 pounds, as well as Kellen Clute, the sophomore tight end, 245 pounds. Third and goal from the one. And we're gonna have a false start here against Sean Harlow, the right tackle. Wow. False start, offense, number 78. Five yard penalty, third down. The thing that is so maddening about this is that a quarterback is never going to use a hard cadence. Here's 78 Harlow. Mannion's not going to go on two here. So this is just the regular sequence of the cadence. There's just a motion there. So to have a jump right there can just be maddening for coaches. After a couple turnovers, an opportunity here for the Beavers. Third and goal now. The ball backed up to just beyond the five. Mannion swings it out to Ward, touchdown! Teron Ward was wide open. Points off of turnovers for the Beavers. Trevor Romain now on for the extra point to tie it up. High snap, but the kick is good. Well, Oregon State could not take advantage of the first interception thrown by Mariota, but they do on the second. I love this design. When you fake the ball to any running back out of the backfield, the linebackers always lose them in coverage. You see that whole wash in there? Now he's wide open in the flat. A full roll, even to Mannion's left. That is a great play design by Mike Riley. That's something that all play callers and quarterbacks keep in their hip pocket. On short yardage situations, the player that you fake that ball to on the play action, always open, and they use it for a touchdown there. 
17-7 here at Autzen Stadium. What a comeback from Oregon State. And if you think about it, their opening drive of the game, they faced fourth and one, and they threw an interception in the end zone. Well, this has all been mistakes by Oregon that has allowed the Beavers to get back in this ball game. Two interceptions from Marcus Mariota, and Addison had the fumbled punt, which led to the first touchdown for Oregon State. Trevor Romain to kick off. A squib kick, trying to keep it away from Thomas. They do that successfully. Evan Bayless, the tight end, is the one who recovers that kick. DeAnthony Thomas, he got this team on the board. A touchdown on the first drive for Oregon. Then his running back mate, Thomas Tyner, with a 13-yard touchdown. But storming right back for Oregon State and Storm Woods, a two-yard touchdown run. That was after the fumble by Addison. And now Mariota's back on the field in a tie game with 15 seconds to go here in the first half. Mariota forced out of the pocket, gets rid of it, and he was out of the pocket, pressured by Dylan Wynn. You know, with the, with the way Mariota has played in the last couple of series and only nine seconds left, I know that Oregon's DNA is to go, 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 but it might be time to just hand the football off and go into halftime tied 17-17. Again, pressure. Dump it off out of bounds, though. It was Addison. No catch. Three seconds to go. And, Joel, I think this Oregon State team took your keys quite literally. You said you, you got to play from ahead. You can't play from behind. Well, they've at least tied it up now. Well, and, and they took advantage of opportunities. Those missteps by Oregon were huge. Turnovers. This is a team that does not turn the ball over historically. Been one of the best in the country as far as turnover margin in the last couple of years. So you don't get those opportunities against the Ducks. Oregon State has gotten them today, and they've taken advantage. On third and ten, Mariota, final play of the half. And Mariota will just run out of bounds at the 45-yard line. So Oregon State trailed 14-0 after the first quarter. Behind three takeaways, they've tied it up at 17 here in the 117th edition of the Civil War. Right now, let's get a Rob Stone in L.A. for the Pizza at Halftime Report. All right, Justin, thank you. Joined by Eddie George Petros Papadakis here. Back on October 26th, remember Mariota, he injured his left knee. Football is presented by K Jewelers back here at Austin Stadium as we get set to start the third quarter. We're all tied up 17 17 here in the Civil War. Justin Kutcher alongside Joel Clad and Joel. I don't think many people would have thought we'd be tied at 17 <laughs> right now. And really, it's because of all the turnovers by Oregon. Yeah, Oregon started out so quick like they normally do, but then it was the miscues and the turn. Oregon started out so quick like they normally do, but then it was the miscues and the turnovers that got Oregon State back in this ballgame. First, the fumbled punt. Murphy was right there to curl that one in. And then Mariota with some unexplicably bad throws for him. He is a better quarterback than what he showed in the second quarter. Two interceptions after the two interceptions last week against Arizona. But you have to credit the Beavers because they capitalized on those mistakes and ultimately tied this ball game up at 17. Oregon State kicks off to open up this third quarter. Trevor Romain will kick off with DeAnthony Thomas back deep. Thomas will take it from the two. 
Oh, yeah. Anthony Thomas, he'll get bottled up across the 20, up to the 23, and let's check back in with Molly McGrath. Thanks, guys. I talked to OSU's coach Mike Riley at the half, and he said that it's crucial that they hold on to that momentum from the second quarter. He said those turnovers were huge and game-changing for them. They just need to stay sound defensively. They can't give up those chunk plays. And I was back by the locker room, and these OSU players are pumped up right now. Justin? They really should be. When you think about what's at stake for this Oregon State team, this team comes into this game with a record of six and five. They lost four in a row on first down, the handoff to Tyner. And Thomas Tyner up to the 31, picks up eight as we look at our first half stats brought to you by K Jewelers. And those three turnovers were big. The points off of the turnovers were huge. Only 31 plays and only 155 rushing yards for Oregon. They had 108 in the first quarter, weren't able to get anything done in the second. DeAnthony Thomas takes the handoff. And Thomas very close to that first down marker. And the injury to Byron Marshall has really affected this Oregon team because for whatever reason, they don't want to feature Thomas Tyner and they're trying to get the ball to DeAnthony Thomas from the backfield. But he's only 171 pounds. This defense has been able to stop him between the tackles. Tyner's been the one that's had effective running between the tackles. On third and one, it is Thomas, and Thomas has that first down up to the 36. Well, you mentioned Byron Marshall. There he is with a boot on that right foot. Injured his ankle against Arizona last week. Five yards shy of 1,000 yards on the season. He's a guy with 14 rushing touchdowns on the year, so he's a huge part of this offense. Hand off to Thomas, trying to get outside. He'll cut it back now. And DeAnthony Thomas gets tackled by Monterosa. Picks up four. Monterosa did an outstanding job of maintaining his pursuit of the football. DeAnthony Thomas had a bit of a seam there. Meng Wow, number 46, he's the one who cut him back towards the interior of the defense. DeAnthony Thomas then had a seam, but the defensive tackle, Manarosa, 282 pounds, hustling after the ball carrier, and made the tackle. Four plays, all runs for Oregon in this quarter. It's Mariota keeping it. And Mariota will get taken down. They're going to mark him down forward progress at the 43. Tyreek Zimmerman with a tackle. And these safeties playing awfully close to the line of scrimmage, playing with fire a little bit, especially with guys like Josh Huff on the field, number one, the senior from Houston with 48 catches, coming into this ball game for 850 yards. Third and three, Oregon State showing the pressure. This could be a big time stop if Oregon State can get it. Thomas, DeAnthony Thomas, like you mentioned, not a big guy, not able to move that pile, gets tackled by Dylan Wynn. And there were only one safety back there. All those defenders, man-to-man -man on the outside, one safety back in the middle of the field, and all those defenders up near the line of scrimmage, and this Oregon State team has done a terrific job staying in their lane. They're going to have to do it again. Oregon going for it on fourth down. Fourth and one, Thomas Tyner's back in. It is Tyner. Tyner gets wrapped up. The ball's loose. Mariota has it. And he gets strung outside. He dives. He lost the football, and they're going to mark him down shy of that first down marker. Scott Crichton forced the fumble. It was on the exchange with Thomas Tyner and Marcus Mariota. Oregon very fortunate that Mariota was able to recover that ball and actually have an opportunity to move the chains but right on that exchange Crichton was in there terrific junior and then the pursuit of the defense Rashad Reynolds the senior 187 pounds racing with Mariota that ball coming loose on fourth down first and ten here for Oregon State it's Storm Woods with the run and Woods with a very good run on first down, he gets 12 yards. Brian Jackson with a tackle. Another first down here for Oregon State. And this recipe for beating Oregon is, well, it's looking like we've seen. Well, it's exactly what we saw last week. No energy right now for Oregon. They're sidelined. Nobody up. Just all flat, standing on the sidelines. No energy on their defense. This is exactly what happened to them last week at Tucson. First and ten, Woods again up the middle. 
Up to the 30, gets three, tackled by Derek Malone. So what is it about this Oregon defense that teams like Arizona, teams like Stanford, and now a team like Oregon State is able to have the success on the ground? Well, one of these is not like the other. Arizona has Kadeem Carey, one of the best backs in the country, and Stanford historically runs the ball with so much power. Coming into this game, Oregon State was not of that mold, but they're doing a nice job running the football nonetheless. Flea flicker. Mannion with plenty of time. Going up, Cooks in a double coverage, and that's incomplete. Ekpre Olamu nearly picked it off. And triple team, even off of a flea flicker. This is how much Oregon respects Brandon Cooks. Those fakes don't do anything to the secondary. Terrence Mitchell, Brian Jackson, Ifo Ekpre Olamu. Olamu almost had his second interception of the game. That is respect for the Bolitnikov finalists. Third and seven. The Duck fans realize this is a big time stop for Oregon. Mannion. That is incomplete. Was looking for Victor Bolden. Dior Mathis on the coverage. I can't believe that Cooks came as close as he did to catching that ball in the triple team. There's Olamu, a bit of hand fighting. Olamu has the ball in his hands and almost intercepted that one. But that ball is more towards the back pylon. I think Cooks might have a chance of that. The fact that Mannion underthrew it a little bit allowed Olamu to get in there. A 47 yard field goal attempt by Trevor Romain. His long on the year is a 50 yarder to give Oregon State the lead, and he does. First lead of the night for the Beavers. The defense made the stop on fourth down. The offense puts up three. They lead 20 to 17. It's been a tale of two seasons for Oregon State. It's a tale of two sidelines right now in this game as that Oregon State sideline, they're jumping up and down, whereas Oregon, uh-uh. And Oregon, you know, Oregon State under Mike Riley, what a turnaround. You know, this this century, they've won 103 ball games. That's third in the Pac-12 conference. To get their previous 100 victories as a program, so you've got to go back 34 seasons. This just shows you how good of a job Mike Riley has done. There in Corvallis, one of the best coaches in the country. Thomas Maillard deep in the end zone. And Thomas gets crushed as he gets up to the 25. Zach Robinson with a special teams tackle. We have not seen a passing attempt from Marcus Mariota in this Oregon offense in the last four drives. Didn't attempt one there on the opening drive of this second half. Seven runs on that possession. No passes. Ever since we saw those two possessions end in interceptions, it's been all running. Such a hot start for Mariota, but since been ice cold. On first down, it's Tyner. A true freshman up to the 29 gets four yards. And what we're seeing right now is the chess match play out. Mark Banker, the offensive coordinator against Mark Helfrich and Scott Frost. Mark Banker just stacking the box. Safety's near the line of scrimmage, daring Oregon to throw the ball. Second and six. Again, it's Tyner gets strung out and gets tackled by Ryan Murphy. And this is what happens when you've got three players near the line of scrimmage with no deep responsibility. Safety, Ryan Murphy, number 25, can just attack the ball carrier right away on all these run plays. Third down and seven. Mariota to pass on third and seven. He does, completes it for the first down. Braylon Addison with Steven Nelson on him. Mariota needed that one. Big time. To settle himself down, get this passing game going. This one was right on the money to Addison for the first down. Mariota forced out of the pocket, throws, and he completes it, but the ball is knocked loose. Evan Bayless, and it will be a catch. Scott Crichton wasn't even blocked. Six and a half sacks, 14 tackles for loss on the season, and Mariota was dealing with him. It's placed at the spot of the fumble. Second right down. in his face at the start of that play. It's a wonder that he got that ball off and completed in the first place. Goes for a three-yard completion. Tyner got hit, and he's going to lose a yard. 
by that guy you just mentioned, Scott Crichton. Crichton beating Cameron Hunt, number 77, the right guard. He's a true freshman, one of six true freshmen to play this season. He's a four-star recruit. They really like him, but this is a big situation for these young players. Their first time in this rivalry game situation. Third and eight. We just saw a completion on third and seven by Mariota to Braylon Addison. Mariota. He's going to try to run. How about that move? Oh, Mariota down the sideline with a first down. How's the knee feeling? 21 yard run. Now watch the move that Mariota puts on number four, DJ Alexander. Here's Alexander in the open field, gives him that inside leg, and now he explodes to the outside for the first down. That's vintage Marcus Mariota. That's what we saw for the first eight games of the season. Mariota throws back towards the sideline. That's complete to Daryl Hawkins. And this is all number eight. Mariota is not getting any help from his offensive line right now. I haven't seen an Oregon offensive line get beat this badly in pass protection in a long time. Mariota running for his life on this possession and yet still able to move the chains and make completions. Remarkable drive from number eight. Second down and one. You almost get the feeling that that, that cut that he made with that knee just gave him a ton of confidence. Mariota back over the middle of the half. Touchdown! That drive was Marcus Mariota at his best. Josh Hoff left all alone in the middle scene. And Mariota wills his team down the field for that touchdown to take the lead. Matt Logan's extra point is good. Marcus Mariota, four for four on that drive, including a conversion on third and seven. Oh, yeah, 21-yard run. And then this, 28 yards down the seam to Josh Huff. It's 24-20. Oregon back on top. Marcus Mariota opened this game six for six, then 0 for six with two interceptions, was four for four on that drive. And Oregon is back on top. And look at this bench. They've got life again. A short kick. Bolden taking it from the 16. He gets tackled right away. I'll take you back to that touchdown. We had talked about the fact that they had to roll this. Well, the defensive line was winning the battle all series. So they rolled the pocket. And then the safeties never get away from the line of scrimmage. And earlier in the drive, and Justin, you hit on it, this was a confidence boost for Mariota. That was the knee that he had injured back in that Stanford ball game, the left knee. He cuts off of it. It was a terrific run. It moved the chains. And number eight looked way different after that cut. Marcus Mariota showing up in a huge way in the last series, four for four on that touchdown drive. There is a player down on the ground for Oregon. It is number 30. That is Ayele Ford. Ford, the player injured here on that special teams coverage. And we're going to have a timeout here. 24-20, Oregon leads Oregon State, 7.41 to go. The Beavers with the ball when we come back. Ayele Ford walked off the field under his own power, being checked out now by the training staff. He is all right. Fox Sports is proud to team with Feeding America, a nationwide network of food banks that helps feed more than 37 million people in America each year through pantries, soup kitchens, and shelters. Visit feedingamerica.org slash Fox Sports to learn how you can fight hunger in your community. Oregon State with the ball at their own 23. Mannion under center. And we've got flags. Ball start on the offense, number 78. 
that's a five yard penalty. First down. This was the exact same thing that got them down inside the five. Same motion. Watch your right tackle. As soon as the tight end takes off, the running back takes off in motion. It's not even a hard cadence. And he knows it. That's why he was so upset, the fact that he jumped. First and 15, Manning backs up into the shotgun. Showing pressure off the edge. The handoff is to Ward, and he's got some room to run. Teron Ward gets shoved out at the 43 by Ekpre Olamu, a 25-yard pickup. I love the patience on this run. Watch him sit for his guard, and that's the block by number 71, Grant Inger, that springs it for a long drive. But if he were to just beat his guard to that spot, he would have never gotten that block. Patience of the utmost important for running backs when guards are pulling around. 97 yards for Ward, who gets the handoff. And this time, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, Derek Malone, with his sixth tackle of the night. Well, that makes the math much easier because now he's 10 carries for 97 yards, so his average yard per carry is 9.7. Well, and Oregon's fine with that. The safety's way back, not caring what's going on, making sure that Brandon Cooks doesn't get loose down the field. On second and 10, they go to Cooks. Cooks trying to make a couple of guys miss. You can see him being surrounded, and guess what? He gets 11. When a defense is playing this way and giving you the run game, giving you short passing game, then what you got to do is take it, not try to throw the ball down the field. Cooks is being doubled. There's a safety each and every play, either over him or spying him once he lines up. It's coming down here to the bottom of your screen, and you're going to ultimately see the safety get very deep. Three players over two right here for Oregon. Play clock is down to four. Play action. Mannion stepping up, throws to his tight end, Clute. And Clute is across the 15, down to the 14-yard line. Brian Jackson with the tackle. That's a 33-yard pickup. And again, the respect that Oregon is giving to Brandon Cooks. Watch this. He's going to get triple teamed, and that's ultimately what clears the zone for 83 Clute. All the Oregon players going deep with him. Eyes on seven Cooks, the Blitnikoff finalist. There's the third Oregon player. Clute left all alone at the 20-yard line. First and 10, and the 13 of Oregon. And off Ward. And Ward will get two, tackled by DeForest Buckner. So let me ask this question. Is it too much attention being paid to Brandon Cooks? Only if you're giving up touchdowns. And so far, Oregon has been able to hold them to field goals, get off the field in opportune situations. They still have the lead. The last thing that Oregon wants to do is give up a touchdown that Gives Oregon State the lead to Brandon Cooks, who has now tied the Pac-12 record for most catches in the season with 118. Second and eight. Mannion with time throws to his tight end. And that is incomplete. Clute, the intended receiver. And it was nearly picked off by Ifo Ekpreolamu, which would have been his second of the night. I'm so impressed with him. That's a terrific ball from Mannion. Clute's got to come up with that. The sophomore. And Ifo Ekpreolamu all over it. Nick Aliotti dialing up some quality coverages here inside the 20, making it very tough on Oregon State and Mannion to complete the ball. Third and eight. Cooks in motion. They come back to Ward. He's got a blocker. Ward trying to get to that first down marker. Where is he out? Just shy of it. Ekpreolamu shoves him out of bounds. What a play by Ifo Ekpreolamu. Tyler Anderson, number 33, was out there, the fullback, and he was leading Teron Ward and just whiffed on the block. What athleticism from Olamu to get out of the way of the block and get the tackle in front of the sticks. Well, they're going to try to go for it here on fourth and short. Ward slips, and he's down, losing a yard.
Teron Ward tried to cut it back, lost his footing. And now it's Oregon ball. What a stop from Oregon. Nick Aliotti, so happy with his defense. Ward slips to the turf. Coach Raleigh can't believe it until a four-point lead for Oregon. There is a place on the western edge where athletes don't just play football, they reinvent it. A blueprint for excellence. You, happy Thanksgiving, happy Hanukkah, or as they call it this year, Thanksgiving Cup. It's first down from their own five for Oregon. Thomas Tyner in the backfield. And Tyner takes the handoff. Picks up eight yards. Let's go back to that third down stop. Watch the tackle by Ekpre Olamu. Well, he's the one that's going to jump over the block of the fullback when this play was, I mean, it, that's just terrific athleticism. And to make the tackle, it's one thing to avoid the block, to also make the tackle. That's where the series was won for Oregon. I know that on fourth down, Ward ended up slipping down, trying to cut off of his inside foot. But Ifo Ekpre Olamu is as good as advertised. He's been terrific in coverage against Cooks. And then on the outside, making tackles and plays like that, he's been terrific. And what impressed me so much about that is he wrapped up the arms, not allowing the running back to reach forward to get the first down. And more slipping in the backfield, this time for Tyner. There has been some moisture falling here at Autzen Stadium. DJ Alexander was the Oregon State player in the backfield, but that moisture right now making it tough on these running backs. They've got to cut off their outside foot. Everybody's trying to cut off their inside foot and slipping out. Second down and 11 here for the Ducks. Mariota, his pass is dropped by Daryl Hawkins. Rashad Reynolds there on the coverage. But that's one that if you're Daryl Hawkins, you got to catch. Thrown accurately by Mariota. There was space there in front of the corner. Rashad Reynolds would have been close to a first down. It would have definitely been a manageable third down. These are the positions that Oregon has got to avoid. Third and 11. Mariota throws out to Tyner, and that's incomplete. So the Oregon State defense does the job here. Gives up one first down, but shuts down Oregon after that. And they'll get the ball back with just about three minutes to go in this third quarter. It's just been an excellent performance by this defense. Ninth in the conference in total defense. 81st in the country when you're facing the offense that's fourth in the nation in terms of scoring 44.7 points per game. It's a heck of a job, giving up only 24 points in the third quarter. First punt of the night for Alejandro Maldonado. Brandon Cooks is the return man. And Cooks gets driven back, fair catch signaled, and he makes it at the 38-yard line. Well, we've got ourselves a ball game here in Eugene. Sean Mannion, who leads the country in passing yards, brings his team back out in the field, down by four. Well, Joe, we talked about this before, that this Oregon State team, it's a program that has had a lot of good running backs. And yeah. this year, it's been non-existent yes. almost. Simonton, Jackson, Bernard, Rogers, all been terrific on the ground. And tonight, though, they've been able to run the football with Storm Woods and Teron Ward. Storm Woods is in that tailback here on first down. Mannion throws it out and completes to one of his tight ends, Tyler Perry. No, not that Tyler Perry. This Oregon State team been so effective driving the ball. Over six yards per play. I caught that one, by the way. <laughs> Sailed right over it. <laughs> but they've been inefficient in the red zone. Oregon's been able to bow their neck a little bit in the shadow of their own goal line. On second down, up the middle, it's Woods. Into Oregon territory again. This is the 10th possession of the game for Oregon State. They have been in Oregon territory now nine times. Eight of them, they have ended in that territory with just two touchdowns. 
and they've only given up 20 points speaking of Oregon Stevens I think they're fine with this this game plan from Nick Aliotti saying fine run the ball all you want between the 20s once we get into the red zone we're gonna bow our neck it's gonna be tougher to throw the ball to Cooks and tougher to run the ball because our safeties will be low first down play action man and over the middle that's incomplete there's the flag Cooks the intended receiver Terrence Mitchell this time on the coverage Terrence Mitchell is going to get called. He was all over Cooks for about five yards before that ball got over the middle. Easy call for the official. Pass interference, defense number 27. The penalty places the ball in the spot of the foul, automatic first down. You can tell that right arm all over Cooks. Easy call for the back judge. Terrence Mitchell, the junior, leads the team in interceptions with five. Started every single game this season. An athletic player. Played running back and basketball in high school. Having a tough time tonight against Cooks. On first down, the handoff is to Woods. And Woods, another good run. As he gets across the 35 to the 36. And let's check back in with Molly McGrath. You guys mentioned the conditions changing out here. Well, not only is it very cold, but right before halftime, it started to rain, and it has not let up. It's at a light drizzle now, but this field is very, very wet. There's no wonder why some of these players are slipping. They can't get traction on this turf, and uh, the conditions are definitely affecting the game at this time. Justin? All right, thanks, Molly. Second down and six coming up here for the Beavers. Down by four, under two to go here in the third quarter. The handoff to Bolden on the end around. And Bolden has a first down. Up to the 26-yard line, Brian Jackson with a sixth tackle of the night. And number 25, Boseco Lacombo, a senior playing his last game in Autzen Stadium. He was the one that didn't secure that edge and allowed Bolden the opportunity to cut that ball back upfield. Just any hesitation whatsoever from a, de a defense on that fly sweep is going to allow for positive yards from the rushing attack for Oregon State. Bolden in motion again. Play action. Mannion. And we've got a flag thrown. The intended receiver is Kellen Clute. I think that they're going to get Brian Jackson on a hold here. It was before the ball was thrown, but he basically tackled Clute along the sideline. Is that frowned upon? Yes. Before the pass was thrown, holding on the defense, number 12, 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Brian Jackson, a senior, also playing his last game in Autzen Stadium. You're going to see all the attention to Cooks, the jam on the line of scrimmage. Now Clute enters the screen, and Jackson was being beat and just drags him down along the sideline. New set of downs for Oregon State. First and 10 from the 16. Storm Woods, and he's going to get dropped for a loss of two, which brings us to a Lowe's never-stopping proving game break. Let's go back to L.A. and Patrick O'Neill. All right, Justin, in-state matchup clear across the country. Number 19, UCF, hosting South Florida. Only 98 miles separate these two. Well, the Knights finally get on the, the board with a touchdown right there. That's Justin Tukes hollowed it in. Central Florida just kicked the field goal. It's 13-6 to six. going to the half. Justin and Joel. We've got a great one here at Austin Stadium. Justin Kutcher alongside Joel Clapp and Mal McGrath. 24-20, Oregon leads Oregon State. Second and 12. And we've got a flag, a false start before the snap. Prior to the snap, false start, offense number 10. Five-yard penalty, remains second down. This is the 117th edition of the Civil War. Justin Kutcher, Joel Klatt, and Milo McGrath with you here on Fox Sports 1. It is cold. It's raining here at Austin Stadium, which they say before every game, it never rains at Austin Stadium. I'm kind of confused by that. <laughs> They're making a liar out of us. Mannion sets it up for his tight end, Caleb Smith, and a good job by Terrell Robinson with a tackle. A pickup of just three. What great recognition from a true freshman. Normally, you get too much aggressiveness up the field on those screen passes from a freshman, but Terrell Robinson falls right back in the lap 
of Caleb Smith, the tight end that was trying to get a delayed screen in the middle of the field. Morgan State's going to let the clock hit zeros and play the last quarter of the 117th Civil War. And they'll start it down by four. The Ducks have won five in a row here in the Civil War. But the Beavers are battling down by four as we go to the fourth quarter. 24-20, Oregon on top of Oregon State. Oregon State with a third and 14. Mannion over the middle was looking for Cooks. He had a receiver wide open down the sideline. The pressure applied by Taylor Hart. Storm Woods, number 24, he leaves the backfield and was wide open, would have walked into the end zone. Watch him, he's going to come out of the backfield and run a bit of a wheel route. Nobody went with him, a complete breakdown in coverage. Mannion didn't see him. It would have gone for a touchdown. Taylor Hart with the pressure in Mannion's face. If he had one more beat, he could have gotten back to his right side to find Storm Woods. Trevor Romain on for the 37-yard field goal attempt. And it is good. What a huge miss from Mannion. Great kick to pull within one, but a mistake there from Oregon State. The pressure, though, coming right up the middle. Taylor Hart. Taylor Hart, 287 pounds, 6'6". He's got three sacks on the year. It's an honorable mention Pac-12 player last year, so he's got some motor to him. Well, tomorrow on Fox Sports 1, it's the most explosive Ultimate Fighter finale yet. A pivotal rematch ignites as Gray Maynard takes on Nate Diaz, and this season's finalists take one last step in chase of their dream. The Ultimate Fighter finale live from Las Vegas tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. 24-23 here at Austin Stadium in the 117th edition of the Civil War. And they actually play for the Platypus Trophy, which not many people realized. The Platypus Trophy given to the winning school's alumni association. And did you know that the male platypus have spurs on their hind limbs that produce venom? I did not know that, Justin. We try to educate you on these broadcasts, courtesy of Max Linewall. Thomas takes the short kick. Thomas, he's dangerous. Thomas to the outside, and he slips, and he goes down across the 40 at the 42. Players that can play above the X's and O's. Look at him. He's bottled up. Nowhere to go. And then finds a seam out of nothing. DeAnthony Thomas, as explosive as they come in college football. A 34-yard return by DeAnthony Thomas, and now he is in the backfield here on first down. They hand off to Thomas. Thomas hits the hole, and he gets shoved out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Oregon State. A 20-yard run by DeAnthony Thomas. There's that explosiveness, and now Oregon in business after an explosion play. They always work quickly right back at the line of scrimmage. And off again to Thomas. Thomas getting on the outside. It looked like maybe Oregon got away with a hold. Farrell Brown with the block. Tyreek Zimmerman, number eight for Oregon State, has been slow playing these runs. Getting up there and not being decisive about when to attack DeAnthony Thomas, and Thomas is making him pay. Now Thomas Tyner is in at tailback. A breather for Thomas. Mariota throwing towards the end zone, overthrows Farrell Brown. <laughs> Take a look at Tyreek Zimmerman. He's been hurt on the last two run plays, and then here he is, the right safety. A little bit too many steps towards the middle of the field. Farrow Brown was wide open, Crichton with the pressure in Mariota's face. Second down and 10 for the Ducks. 
Mariota pressured again. Rolling out to his right. And now he runs out of bounds. Scott Brighton has just been all over Mariota. He's on the pressure again. And Everett Bignard, the senior from San Diego, number 71, got away with a little bit of a hold right in front of the official. Because Scott Crichton, number 95, has just owned this offensive line during the course of this ballgame. It's going to be a loss of four on the play, so third and 13. And off to Tyner. He's trying to bounce it out. Could it? Sean Martin there with a tackle. This is the decisiveness that you need to play with as a defensive player. Martin's outside of the tackle box, but he attacks the running back in the hole right away and gets him to the ground. If you slow play these running backs, they're too powerful. They're too speedy. They'll pick their hole and get loose. Well, on that time, Sean Martin, the senior from Corona, California, an excellent job with the third down stop. Matt Wogan now on for a 43-yard field goal attempt. And that kick is no good. Hooks it. We're still in a one-point ball game. 24-23 after the missed field goal. Oregon on top. Are in a very good game, a one-point game, as a matter of fact. And if you go back over the history of this rivalry, 1998, Ken Simonton, a game-winning touchdown in the second overtime to give Oregon State the win. Then in 2001, Keenan Howery, the punt return, helps the Ducks clinch the conference title. 2007, the Beavers' first road team to win in 10 years as they win it in double OT. In 2009, the Ducks, they clinch their first Rose Bowl burst since 94 with a four-point victory. Here, it's Oregon State with the ball at the 26-yard line. Jerron Ward in the backfield. And off to Ward. It's the hole. Now gets outside. Ward down the sideline is across midfield. To the 48 of Oregon. Great block by Tyler Anderson, the fullback number 33. But I don't think Nick Aliotti cares so much about these big gainers in the middle of the field. The defensive coordinator for Oregon, his game plan is very clear. They're not going to allow Cooks to get behind them, behind their secondary. They're going to double team the Bolitnikoff Award finalist. And then they'll bow their neck, and they're going to come up near the line of scrimmage once Oregon State gets to the 25-yard line closer to the red zone. And it's worked for them all night long. A 26-yard run for Ward. Great block on the edge right there. There's Tyler Anderson blocking on number 25. Paseco Lacombo, the senior, may have gotten away with a little bit of a hold there. Number 69, Josh Andrews, was shaken up on the play. The senior from Fontana, California. They call him Juice around campus. Well, I tell you what, with the uh, uniforms that Oregon State is wearing, that's kind of appropriate. Could be some orange juice. Grant Bays will come in for Josh Andrews. As he is still down there on the ground. And he's just a redshirt freshman from Oceanside. 6'1", 305 pounds, Grant Bays, number 70. They've been running the football so well over that left side of the offensive line. Michael Phillip, Josh Andrews. Josh Andrews, a huge part of that. He's 6'5", 304, Teron Ward with a huge night so far. 14 rushes for 177, 117, excuse me, yards. Josh Andrews is still down there on the ground being tended to by the training staff of Oregon State. It's going to be Josh Mitchell who's going to go in for him, not Grant Bays. With 12.41 to go here in this fourth quarter. One point lead for Oregon. Mitchell is their backup center. But he also will come in at any of the inside spots, either guard position and the center position. So they go with a little more experience rather than the freshman Bays. It's good to see Andrews, though, up and walking off the field under his own power. 
A key cog in the offensive line this year for Oregon State. The Beavers first and ten on the 48 of Oregon. And the Ducks defense asking this crowd to make some noise. Mannion throws his receiver slips. That was Caleb Smith. Raheem Castle was the man on the coverage, the linebacker. I think they just got their feet tangled up. Inadvertent contact. Caleb Smith went to the turf. It was there, though. The zone was vacated. Mannion saw it and was trying for the big play to his tight end. Second down and ten. Mannion looking for Cooks. Incomplete. Terrence Mitchell there on the coverage. So now third and ten coming up. I'm surprised that Oregon State didn't stick with the run game early in this set of downs. They've had so much success with it during the course of this ball game, and they haven't been able to throw the ball down the field. Now in an obvious down situation, they'll have to deal with Tony Washington and this crowd who's come to life on third down. Third and ten. Mannion steps up over the middle, hits his tight end, Smith, for the first down. All the way out to the 25, a 23-yard completion. And check out Sean Harlow, the true freshman, number 78, the right tackle. He's working against number 91, the best pass rusher that Oregon has. He gets beat, but he keeps pressing him upfield, allowing Mannion to step up in the pocket and find his tight end, Caleb Smith, for a huge first down. A flag coming in from the secondary. A couple of them. Illegal substitution on the defense. 12 players in formation. Five yard penalty. First down. Mark Helfrich can't like this. Some uncharacteristic penalties, but now close to the red zone. This is where Oregon has had all their success defensively during the course of this game. Their game plan has been, hey, if Oregon State can get down here, that's fine. This is the time we turn it on. On first and five, the handoff is to Ward. Look at that cutback and hesitation. Ward is inside the five. Ekpre Olamu gets him out of bounds, but not before a pickup of 16. It wasn't just a cut back. The whole front side was completely shut off. He turned to go backside, and he's got to go all the way around the offensive line and then continues back to the front side. I don't think I've seen a run quite like that all season long. What terrific vision from Teron Ward. First and goal from the four. Mannion, play action, throws the end zone, touchdown, Tyler Anderson. The Beavers back on top here in this Civil War. They're going to keep their offense on the field and go for two. Trying to make it a seven-point game with 11.05 to go here in this fourth quarter. Teron Ward, the tailback. Mannion lost one up, and a flag is thrown. Avery Patterson defending Malik Gilmore. Pass interference on the defense number 21. 
by rule, the ball is placed at the one and one half yard line. Replay the try. Helfrich is arguing on the sidelines that this ball was uncatchable, but that's not a very good argument. <laughs> Clearly catchable. Patterson all over Malik Gilmore in the back of the end zone. And that ball very much in a catchable area for Gilmore. But he was interfered with. Storm Woods now in that tailback. The handoff to him in Woods. He gets stopped by Taylor Hart. They cannot convert the two point conversion, but they do get six points. Mannion rolling out, able to find his fullback, Tyler Anderson, and the Beavers lead by five here in Austin. Three lead changes all this half. Oregon State now on top by five. Check out this block by Ward. Teron Ward, he's going to go and he's going to cut down the edge. That's the key block when you're trying to run a power pass or what's called a full flow pass. That block right there is what allows Mannion to continue rolling out to the right and ultimately get to his second and third wide receiver. Arik Armstead was the man he blocked. Mannion's able to find his fullback, Tyler Anderson. What a great drive for Oregon State. They stuck to that run again. Trevor O'Main. D'Anthony Thomas from the one. Thomas gets run out of bounds at the 15-yard line. Well, a full week of football continues tomorrow right here on Fox College Saturday, presented by K Jewelers as K-State battles Kansas, then Iowa State takes on West Virginia. Then 25th-ranked Notre Dame battles 8th-ranked Stanford on Fox. Fox Sports is your home for college football all week long. How about this ball game we've got here at Austin Stadium in Eugene, Oregon? Oregon lost last week against Arizona, 42-16. They're trailing by five right now. On first down, Thomas takes the hand up. And a good run by DeAnthony Thomas. He gets 12, up to the 28. Scott Triton with his sixth tackle. Is this a case of whichever team has the ball last is going to win? Well, both defenses have, have made plays during the course of this game, so I think it just comes down to who can make the plays down the stretch. Thomas gets ripped to the ground by Dylan Wynn. He gets two yards, second down and eight. Oregon is used to this, not having their offense on the field a lot, but the time of possession right now favoring Oregon State by more than 10 minutes in this ball. Mariota throws off the back foot, incomplete. The pressure was coming. Josh Hoff, the intended receiver. And he was wide open. A miscommunication. Mariota saying, that's my fault, because Huff was wide open down the sidelines, looking for a ball on the wheel route thrown down the field. And he got it on the outside shoulder as if he was going to cut towards towards the sidelines and break that route off. Mariota hot and cold tonight, six for six, then 0 for six, four for four, then 0 for four. Now it's third and eight. Mariota stepping up, throws, and he completes that pass. Huff still on his feet. Huff gets across the 35, dragged down to 33. A 37-yard completion. Mariota had to pump, but he had the protection necessary to get that ball into the second window to Huff for a huge conversion and a huge play for Oregon. How about the effort by Josh Huff, the senior, playing his last game here at Austin? Under 10 to go, first and 10 from the 33-yard line. Mariota rolling out to his left, throws high, incomplete for Daryl Hawkins. Let's go back to that third down conversion. It starts with the protection. Mariota had to pump and ultimately get this ball in the second window. You see how Huff has to actually wait for that ball, and then he makes the terrific run after the catch to set him up in plus territory here at the 32-yard line. Ryan Murphy was the one who missed that initial tackle against Huff. And off. Nope, it's kept by Mariota, and Mariota gets dragged down by Monarosa. He actually dropped that ball. 
Very fortunate that that ball bounced right back to Mariota and he was able to recover his own fumble. Very uncharacteristic of the Ducks. Watch this. The ball's ripped out, ripped out by Monterosa and it pops right up wow. to Mariota and he's able to grab it. Unreal break for the Ducks right there in the fourth quarter. Third and 13. Tyner's in. Tyner gets the handoff. Tyner has the first down. How about this true freshman? Great decisiveness. Oregon State gets out of their lanes. And again, a slow play from Sean Martin, number six. Sean Martin has not been decisive at all. Coming up to the line of scrimmage. And Thomas Tyner makes him pay. The true freshman with his best run of the night, setting him up at the 11-yard line. A 24-yard run on third and 13. There is a player down at his Rashad Reynolds. For Oregon State. He's being blocked. And he gets run into by his own player right there. That's Stephen Christian, number 29, Rashad Reynolds. Their best corner has had a heck of a game. Just took one right in that right ankle. It's going to be first and 10 from the 11 yard line here for Oregon. DeAnthony Thomas comes back in. But again, go back to that, that break with the ball bouncing right back up into the hands of Marcus Mariota. The next play, Tyner takes off, sets him up here at the 11 yard line. On first down. Thomas can't get outside. Nice job by the defense. Romo Mangia, a loss of one. Reynolds now back in the ball game. They need him. So just out for one snap, number 16. Their best corner, of course, great corner Jordan, Jordan Poyer graduated last year. Those two, two of the best in the Pac-12 a year ago. Mario to the pump fake to the corner of the end zone. Incomplete was looking for Josh Huff. But again, Mariota hurried in the pocket. This pass rush for Oregon State has been given number eight fits all night long. The Ducks offensive line as poor in pass protection as we've seen them all year long, maybe for the last couple of years. There's number 44, Jabrell Johnson in at Mariota's feet. Third and 11. Mariota out of the pocket. Mariota throws and that one is broken up. Tyreek Zimmerman came over to break it up. And that's a big time play by that junior. Here's Zimmerman getting into the throw window. Mariota had a man in the end zone, tries to get his shoulder back. And there was Zimmerman there to stop him. Going for it here. The pass to the end zone. Touchdown. Just Huff. Mark Helfrich decides to go for it, and Mariota connects with Josh Huff for the 12-yard touchdown. What a throw. Just a big league throw from Marcus Mariota. Right on the outside, near the pylon, only where his guy can catch it. What a sensational throw in a pressure-packed situation. And now Oregon will go for two to try to make it a three-point game. Mariota rolling out to his right, throws, and that's incomplete, looking for Farrell Brown. So both teams fail on their two-point conversion tries. But we have our fourth lead change of the game all coming to half on fourth and 11. Look at that throw. Huff's second touchdown of the night, one-point lead, Ducks. Josh Huff, seven catches, 169 yards, both career highs and two touchdowns as the Ducks lead by one over the Beavers. Matt Logan will kick off. Victor Bolden is back deep. Bolden from the three. Bolden up the middle. 
And Bolden gets spun around across the 35, and they mark him down to 38. A 35-yard return. Lacombo with a special teams tackle. It's going to come down to which defense can step up and make a play. We've seen both of them with turnovers today. It's been a fantastic game so far. Great execution. Some missed assignments. A 749 in a one point game in the 117th Civil War. That's what rivalries are all about. Storm Woods in the backfield. And off to Woods. Tries to cut it back. Will get a yard. Taylor Hart there with his seventh tackle. Remember, Josh Andrews, the left guard for Oregon State, had to leave the game. Number 69, and Josh Mitchell, number 50 came in the ball game for him. Let's see if the Oregon defensive line can take advantage. On second and nine, there's the jet sweep handoff to Cooks. And he'll get a yard. Tony Washington was right there. And Brian Jackson from his safety position was never fooled and he closed on this in a hurry. Watch number 12 get downhill right away, right there for three Oregon Ducks to surround Cooks and not let him get that sideline. And now a huge third down situation. Third and eight, these fans know it. Mannion, pressure, gets rid of it. Incomplete Malik Gilmore, the intended receiver, Dior Mathis on the coverage. It was 6.33 to go here in the fourth quarter. A huge, huge stop by the Oregon defense. Well, Seiko Lacombo, number 25, was the man putting the pressure on Mannion. Didn't allow him to get his feet set, but Dior Mathis draped all over the intended receiver. Gilmore on the sidelines. Great coverage and a great stop for Oregon. Keith Costell on to punt. Bray Madison fumbled earlier on a punt. Calls for the fair catch. And he makes it at the 30. With 6.25 to go. The defense for Oregon steps up. They'll get the ball back, leading by one here in the Civil War. It is a one-point game with 6.25 to go. Oregon leading Oregon State. 48 of the 116 games between these two teams have been decided by seven points or less. Thomas time in the backfield. Hand off to him on first down, runs into some orange jerseys and gets thrown down by Sean Martin. He may want to join the Ultimate Fighter Show with that move. A loss of one on the play, second down and 11. Tyner up the middle. Not much room up there. We'll get a yard. And now as the clock passes the six-minute mark, that becomes a factor. Both teams, their full allotment of timeouts left, three each, Oregon State and Oregon. Oregon's defense answered the challenge in the last series, got their offensive ball back, and now Oregon State has the same opportunity on third and 10. Remember, it was third and 11, excuse me, it was fourth and 11 when Mariota threw that touchdown to Josh Huff, the last drive. Here on third and 10, Mariota over the middle, and it's dropped by Farrell Brown. He turned to run before he had the ball. I said at the beginning of the game, the team that executes is going to win. The emotions of this game sometimes get the best of you trying to make a play too quick. Mariota does exactly what he's supposed to with split linebackers, and Farrell Brown tries to run with it before he secures the catch. Crucial mistake on a third down, forcing a punt. Rashad Reynolds calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 26-yard line. Well, we've got ourselves a one-point game. How do we get here? Oregon put up 14 points on their first two drives of the ballgame. 
But then in the second quarter, a couple of interceptions by Marcus Mariota allowed Oregon State to get back into the game. We went to the half tied at 17. Tyler Anderson gave Oregon State the five-point lead. But then it's Josh Up who came back on fourth and 11 with a 12-yard touchdown catch. And that's how we have a one-point ball game with 5.13 to go. Play action. Mannion has the ball batted down. Second down and 10. Looked like number 92, Dway Kaylee Kipi. Could have been Taylor Hart as well. Both defensive tackles in there, their hands in the air, batting that ball down. Mannion was looking for the skinny post ramp route. I'm interested that they didn't go to the run game on first down, though. Exactly. You've got five minutes left. You've got all three timeouts remaining. You want to take some time off this clock, get some more first downs. Play action. Mannion steps up now with time, throws, and that is complete. Tight end Caleb Smith with the catch at the 49. A 23-yard completion. He bumped his own offensive lineman, Isaac Sayamalo, the center, just a sophomore from Corvallis. And that's why the ball was thrown short. But it does look like Caleb Smith got his arms underneath that ball for the completion. On first down, they will hand off this time to Teron Ward, who kind of lost his footing. Got back to the line of scrimmage. We'll do second down and 10. Mannion, 285 yards passing tonight. He averages almost 372 per game. He's had five games this year with 400-plus yards. Play action again. Mannion comes back near side, and he completes that pass to Brandon Cooks. A nine-yard completion, so third and one, maybe even less than that coming up. And guess what? Two Oregon Ducks on Brandon Cooks. Avery Patterson and Ipo Ekpre Olamu again on him, but able to find some separation from Olamu towards the sideline, and Mannion with a terrific throw, presenting now just a third and one, and Brandon Cooks sets the record. 119 catches, most in Pac-12 history in one season. Third and one. Ward in the backfield. They give it to Ward. He gets that one yard, still on his feet, pushing forward. The ball comes loose. You know there's a battle for that ball going on right now. It's Oregon State ball. Wow. That's Sean Harlow, the true freshman. The right tackle gets on this ball. You can see it was ripped out right there. And Harlow fights for it and secures it at the bottom of the pile. Wow. Oh, man. First and 10 from the 37. Hand off to Woods. And Woods. Dives forward to the 30. Nick Preolamu with a tackle and a player down now. Derek Malone, number 22. Starting Will Backer. He started every single game this season. 97 tackles on the year. The junior from Colton, California. They cannot afford to lose him. They have a lot of depth on this defense, but he's been a main contributor for this Oregon defense the entire season. Second in the Pac-12 entering this game with tackles. And you can see he's in a lot of pain right now. He's the one in the chase mode. Oh. His own player there, 14, Ipo Ekpre Olamu, such a good tackler. We've seen him go low several times on running backs in this ball game, but goes low, and Derek Malone just couldn't see him through the running back. 
catches it in the left leg. Your heart just goes out for a young man like this and Malone. Such a productive player. And this is a defense that rolls through there too deep. It's something that Nick Aliotti has done for a couple of years. They play 20, 22 players, and so they believe that they have as good, if not the best depth in the country because all those backups have played more snaps than others around the country. They get more teaching time because they roll through these defensive players almost like a line change in hockey. A long walk back to the sideline here for Derek Malone. Raheem Castle, number 34, is going to be in the ball game now. He'll replace Derek Malone. Castle, a sophomore. 27 tackles on the season, but with the way Oregon State has run the ball, especially to that weak side, that left side of their offensive line, the right side of the defense, I'd be shocked if they did anything else than run this ball to the left side which is where Raheem Castle is lined up. Second down and three for Oregon State. They have outgained Oregon in total yards tonight. This Beavers team now taking time off the clock as well. Mannion to pass. And he throws complete to Caleb Smith. The forward progress is a first down. Strategy comes into play right now as both teams have three timeouts remaining. At what point, if you're Oregon, Joel, do you start maybe using those timeouts to save yourself some time? You got to think about that. But just like I was talking about, they went right after Raheem Castle. They didn't do it in the run game. They went after him in the passing game, a tight end right in his face. Trying to see if he can make a play. Got the ball completed for a first down, and Oregon State is in no hurry right now. But now Riley urging him to get the line of scrimmage. Seven on the play clock. They're going to have to burn the timeout here. Play clock is down to two, and they will burn a timeout. This is such an interesting situation because you're, you're down in the game, and yet they're almost in a milk-the-clock mode to try to score get points take the lead with not enough time left for Oregon to get back down the field so Oregon's gonna have to start thinking about taking their three timeouts well Trevor Romaine pregame was warming up without a shirt on from 55 yards out able to hit there now that was going the opposite direction what little wind there is sweet beard by the way Romaine what little wind there is, you can tell by the American flag up at the left side of the stadium, would be into his face yep. going this direction. First and 10 from the 25. And a handoff to Bolden, and Bolden breaks through. Touchdown, Beavers! And the patented Oregon State jet sweep works again. The convoy of blockers out in front of Bolden, leading them into the end zone, including Tyler Anderson, number 33. And you got to give Bolden a lot of credit, the true freshman from Rancho Camuca, <coughs> Cucamonga, excuse me, California. He waited for that block from Tyler Anderson. And now, of course, going for the two-point conversion to make it a seven-point game. They failed their first attempts. Mannion throws, and that one's broken up by Ekpreolamu once again.
Let's go back to the touchdown, though. The jet sweep. There's Victor Bolden, the true freshman, in motion. They hand it to him. And now all the Oregon State players. Cooks on the outside with a block. Tyler Anderson, number 33, with a block. And Caleb Smith, he was the third Oregon State player out there with a block. How about Brandon Cooks, a finalist for the Blitnikoff Award, getting it done with a block. But they failed on the two-point conversion, trying to run this full flow play action fake it the same way you're rolling out but Ekpre Olamu all over Cooks again and another sensational play he has had the game of his life tonight 12 tackles four pass breakups one interception but here's here's my question did that touchdown run actually benefit Oregon? Because they still have a minute 38, three timeouts remaining. You had to figure that Oregon State was going to score, whether it was a touchdown or a field goal. They did that now, and they have all this time left. I think you can say that if the opposition's inside the five, but not from outside the 20-yard line. You know, that's a backbreaker for, for Oregon. Well, Thomas has to take it at the one. Thomas dancing, and he steps out of bounds at the 17-yard line. A 16-yard return there by De'Anthony Thomas. You got 1.32 to go. What Oregon needs a touchdown to win it. How about the bounce that Oregon State got right there? Staying inbounds, so rather than starting at the 35-yard line, they're starting all the way back at their 17. That's a huge bounce that made De'Anthony Thomas have to return that from the one yard line. Entering this game, Oregon 47 of 68 touchdown drives in two minutes or less. They need 83 yards in 92 seconds. Mariota on first down, throws over the middle and completes the pass to Daryl Hawkins. What a throw. Just a sensational throw over the middle of the field. Up where Daryl Hawkins can go get it might have been his best of the night. One, two, six. Thank you. One twenty-six to go here in the fourth. Oregon State leading by five. Mariota. Completes the pass again, this time to Braylon Addison. And Addison's got to be careful with all those orange jerks around him not to get stripped. And right down the field they come. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Play fast, play clean. That's the mantra for Oregon. They're doing it on this series. Mariota. Throws towards the sideline. And it's incomplete. Addison could not get the foot down, says the official. It was right in front of Rashad Reynolds, best corner for Oregon State. Ooh, that was awful close. Awful close. Empty backfield here on second down and 10. Some confusion here, and it looks like this play may be under review. Under further review, the pass was ruled incomplete. Sure looked like he had a foot down. It's going to be awful hard to see whether his toe was off the ground or not, because I didn't see any of those pellets that we always see with this turf flying up. It looked like a catch. Oh, ball is secured. It's going to be hard to say where they determine the ball being secure. This is the best look in my estimation. Ball secure. And right at the end, did he get that right toe down? And he secured it, by the way, through falling to the ground, which is going to be an important part of this review as well. Well, we heard from Mike Pereira earlier. Mike was right, as was Joel. We'll bring Mike Pereira back in. Mike, what do you think when you see these replays? Well, I'll tell you, we're all around the tube looking at it here. The question is, does the toe touch? The one thing he does do is secure possession and maintain possession 
when he hits the ground. So they're going to look to see if the tippy toes were actually on the ground there. But do remember, on the field, they did call it incomplete. Mike. Very tight play, but the one thing is, he does maintain that control, Joel. Mike, I'm going to be surprised if they don't give him this catch. It looks to me like that right toe is down, inbounds, once that ball is secure. But again, you're going to have to have indisputable video evidence After overturned. After review, the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass stands. Second down. And they'll let that one go, Mike. Not enough evidence in that video that we showed them to overturn it. Didn't confirm the call, but let it stand. So 104 to go, second down and 10 here for the Ducks. That's a tough break for Oregon. Ball at the 41 of the Beavers. Mariota hits his tight end, Monk down the sideline. Out at the 24-yard line. A 17-yard completion. A little delay release from Munt. Great design from Scott Frost on the blitz. A little hot route, wide open. Mariota pump fake. Scrambling, throws back over the middle, completes it to Huff. Let's see if they use a timeout. They will. A five-yard completion. The pressure applied by Scott Crichton. That's the first timeout used by Oregon this half. I can't believe he went back across his body. Quarterbacks their whole lives are taught never throw late back across your body. Crichton again in the backfield with the pressure. Watch Mariota. That's a far vesk. Throwing it back across his body, body, but getting the completion to Hub. Now it's second down, but forces him to use that timeout. Career highs for Josh Huff. With those 174 yards, he is over 1,000 on the year. They love to try to break Huff open down the middle of the field. He's in the slot. The top side of your screen on the hash. Try to get a safety to bite on a play action or get him to bite on a different seam route. The safety on that. Second and five. Mariota pressure. He gets rid of it. He was out of the pocket. The pressure again by Scott Crichton. Third and five coming up. Coverage was great down the middle of the field, and Crichton again just beating his man. This time it's Tyler Johnstone, the sophomore from Chandler, Arizona, number 64. All sorts of pressure all night long from Scott, Scott Crichton on Marcus Mariota. Here's my question. Where's DeAnthony Thomas? Third and five. The handoff to Tyner, and he has the first down. Stops the clock with 40 seconds. Going hurry up. Mariota throws high incomplete for Johnny Munts. Thirty-five seconds and two timeouts. For a quarterback in this situation, everything is at your disposal. You can throw it short, you can check the ball down. For a play caller, you can run the ball, but DeAnthony Thomas still on the sidelines, the most explosive player the Ducks have. Second and ten. Mariota with time over the middle. Touchdown of the night for Josh Huff on senior night. Oregon 
calls a timeout to discuss their strategy for this two-point conversion opportunity. This one, I think, was the best of the three. Just what a great catch from Josh Huff. And it started with tremendous pass protection, which has not been the case the entirety of the night for Marcus Mariota in the pocket. But he finds his senior wide receiver, the senior from Houston, last time suiting up as a duck in Oxen Stadium. And inside the 30 seconds comes up with a sensational catch. Trying to make it a three-point game. Mariota gets the block. Throws, and that's incomplete. Was looking for Huff again. So we've had four two-point conversion chances. 0 for 4, but how about this? Mariota drives this team down and finds his favorite target, Huff, for his third touchdown of the night. And it was just a hair behind him all the time in the world for Mariota, but he goes back to that left shoulder, leaves his feet right in the face of Tyreek Zimmerman. What a catch from Josh Huff. Huff, nine catches, 186 yards, three touchdowns. Mariota on the drive was five for eight, 76 yards. And what we say, they had plenty of time on the clock with 136 to go. And there's still 29 seconds left. They've struggled on the kickoff team all night. Big return from Oregon State. They can ill afford a big return now from number six, Victor Bolden, the true freshman. Maldonado will kick off. He's got the wind. You gotta hope if you're an Oregon fan that he can get this one deep into the end zone. Victor Bolden had a 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown against Washington. They're gonna keep it low. Taken at the 12 by Bolden. And Bolden gets it out the 32-yard line, so 23 seconds left. You know Mangan can sling it, but they've been double-covering Brandon Cooks all night long. It's going to come out to Richard Mullaney. Bolden's going to get a chance. Caleb Smith, the tight end. Oregon is not going to allow Brandon Cooks to get open down the field for Sean Mangan. If he's going to number seven, he's going to have to force it into double coverage. And this place is going to get loud. Manion gets rid of it to Cooks, who gets tackled at the 39. And a timeout is called here by Oregon State. Avery Patterson with a tackle. We're in this predicament, a one-point lead for Oregon because of this touchdown catch by Josh Huff. No pressure in his face. Leaves his feet, reaches back. Talk about big players making big plays in big situations. Josh Huff has never had a bigger catch than that last touchdown in the Civil War. Oregon State needs 27 yards from here for a 50-yard field goal try. Again, it's into the wind. The official comes running in from the far side. Timeout, Oregon, number two. 30 seconds, timeout. Oregon was confused coming out of the huddle. Not often that you see that, but did the smart thing. And that was the junior, Ekpre Olamu, who was jumping around in the middle of the field, number 14, wanting that timeout and got it. Mannion, over 4,000 yards passing, 36 touchdowns, but no bigger series this season than what he's got right now. 16 seconds left. 
He does have the one timeout, so he can still work the middle of the field. But he's got to start pressing the ball down the middle of the field, trying to get those 26 yards that you were talking about. Second and two. Mannion stepping up, throws through the hands of Cook. That could have been a huge completion. Terrence Mitchell also had a chance to maybe pick it off. I can't believe Cooks popped open in this situation. And Oregon gets away with a little bump a bit early from Avery Patterson. Nine seconds to go. Mannion again over the middle, incomplete. Cooks again, the intended receiver. Well, now with two seconds, you're looking for hook and ladder. Mannion's got a strong enough arm. If he gets enough behind it, he can probably get this ball near the goal line. But he's going to need all the time to do it. Looks like a three-man rush from Oregon. This is for the Civil War. Mannion over the middle. That lateral. And this game is over. Oregon will win. Their sixth straight Civil War. One for the ages in this historic rivalry our right stuff player of the game presented by academy sports and outdoors the senior wide receiver josh huff what a way to go out here at Austin. career Three touchdowns two in the fourth quarter but none of them bigger than this to give the ducks the lead for good Josh Huff, one last time at Otson Stadium. That is a way to close out the college football season for us. Thirty six, thirty five, back and forth we went in that second half and just great effort from both clubs oregon state came in with a four game losing streak hadn't lost six straight since 1997. oregon state will finish the regular season six and six four and five in pac-12 play oregon will move to ten and two seven and two in conference play Let's go down to Molly McGrath, who's joined by Coach Helfrich. Thanks, guys. I'm here with Coach Helfrich, as you said, and this was a very back-and-forth game. They came down to who could make a play down the stretch. How did your team win this one? Just persevered, you know. A uh, ton of guys that care a lot about each other, uh, and that was, a, that was a weird game right there, you know. Left a lot out there in the first half, and, and, they, and you know, we knew that they were going to bring it. Nobody played well last week, and... They played, they played better than we did uh, for a lot of the game, uh, but our guys persevered and, and, and got the W. Huge, huge game. You mentioned the first half. OSU gained some momentum going into halftime, making it a tie game. What kind of adjustments did you make in that second half to win this? Hold on to the ball. You know, we, we threw a couple picks, uh, fumbled, had, that, had the, the muff punt. Mm -hmm. just, just do your job. It wasn't any kind of earth-shattering, you know, huge, huge adjustment deal. We just had to finish.
This was your 10th win of the season. How important was this victory heading into your bowl game to get number 11? Well, 10's always better than none. That's uh, that's the key to it all. And again, our guys, our guys didn't feel very good about last week, and we we played better this week. Not not as clean nearly as we as we would like, but a huge win. Thank you so much, Coach. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Back to you guys. All right, what a ball game here. 36-35. Oregon makes it six in a row here in the Civil War over Oregon State. For Joel Klatt, Molly McGrath, and our entire crew, I'm Justin Kutcher. The final score, 36-35. Right now, let's head to Los Angeles for Fox Sports Live with Mike Hill and Ryan Field. Indeed. Now that is what you call a lead-in, my people. <laughs>